discussion and uh, the first case that we have is a unilateral nasal polyposis uh, 40 year old female uh, the ct of which will be dis discussed by uh, jain sir so just in a few minutes we will start with the surgery and i'm handing over the mic to uh, dr satish jain thank you thank you farooq Good, good morning, morning everybody. everybody. Good morning, good morning, sir. Dr. Good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning. It's, it's really a pleasure, pleasure again to, to be in Bihar. Bihar. And uh, big, big thanks, thanks to the organizing team, especially Dr. Dr. Manoj for taking so much of pain. pain. And I'm amazed to see his setup, the equipment, the cases is lined up, everything in order to make the workshop more and more better. And big thanks to Farooq, who has always been his brother and uh, he has been part of our team for years together. Thank you, Farooq, for uh, making this happen again. And big thanks to Ashwini Boss for being here always with us and the entire team. So it's always nice to be part of such people who are dedicated, committed to academics. Thank you so much for involving me once again. ये जा रहा है कि उधर जा रहा है पिक्चर सो रिगार्डिंग द फर्स्ट केस एज यू ऑल नो दिस वर्कशॉप इज बेसिकली डेडिकेटेड टू एंडोस्कोपिक सर्जरी विद मोर एंड मोर यू नो डिस्कशन ऑन साइनस सर्जरीज This first case is a case of bilateral nasal polyposis, what I have come to know, and I am sharing you some of the fine details of the radiology, which is very important. One of the most important aspects once you plan surgery. See, it's a medical disease which requires medical treatment as a co-treatment, but there are indications for surgery, and when surgery is required. the role of radiology is phenomenal it doesn't only adds on to your diagnosis but the biggest role is in providing anatomical details of the area where we are going to operate i hope you are getting ct scan on screen hello yes hello we, yeah can you hear me sir yes yes are you getting ct scans on screen yes yes we can see it uh, clearly very clearly Okay. Good afternoon, so sir. This... Good afternoon, sir, and uh, I welcome you on behalf of all the uh, uh, delegates here, and uh, we are so pleased to have you. And uh, it's an honor for us. And uh, so we'll be uh, watching your surgeries uh, as a treat to your to our eyes. Thank you so much. So this first case I am going to share with you. is a classical case of nasal polyposis requiring sinus surgery and here what you see is a coronal section ct scan axial section ct scan see ct scan is important in providing you anatomical details what we want is a more and more information from ct scan to facilitate our surgery in a much complete and safer way and the onus is on the surgeon to order the ct scan so what should we order is like you see here this is on the left corner 1 mm scan ct scan is shot in axial plane and then with this software you can reconstruct to all planes and acquire the information in the dynamic way so what we have is this is axial section and if i reconstruct i can reconstruct to all three planes axial coronal sagittal this is very important in orienting yourself to all the anatomy all the surrounding structures any particular anatomical abnormality or disease extension going anywhere you can all relate very well in a dynamic fashion a plain ct scan print out is not adequate to give you all relevant information so this is axial section secondly the most commonly read commonly understood 
you know ct scan is the coronal plane coronal plane ct scans are easy to understood because we get the information in the same plane in which we operate and that is very important and most of the information for sinus surgery you can acquire through the coronal scan but yes the axial and sagittal are vital in providing information of certain areas so this is the coronal scan see after the reconstruction what we are getting is 0.5 mm scan now every movement i go there is a movement of 0.5 mm this way you don't miss any single important structure in the region as far as the anatomy is concerned so this is a very very useful scan for everybody secondly Uh, it's not working. Yes. See, if I see this coronal scan from anterior to posterior, this is the one. See the most anterior picture. Can you see the frontal bone with nematization in it? This is frontal sinus. This is left side. This is right side, and this is inter sinus septum, which is eccentric. This is never in center. And see this information. You have to relate. in a dynamic fashion all over see in the in the floor of the frontal sinus what is coming up this is beak this is beak of the frontal bone which is coming in the floor of the frontal sinus this is very very important to know this is the beak if i reconstruct in all three planes see this if i reconstruct in all three planes see how the frontal sinus is so strategically located difficult sinus it is considered a difficult sinus for the regions when you go by the endoscope from here from the in the nasal cavity the frontal sinus is located far anteriorly and superiorly in order to work inside in order, in order to look inside your regular 0 degree scope is not adequate you need an angle scope to look up anteriorly into the lumen of the frontal sinus and the anatomy around and that is how you have to get used to with angle angle scope now see if we come from the endoscope we have to go like this so anatomy in this region is very very important to understand and this is so variable this is extremely variable anatomy there are lots of cells in this region which complicate the frontal sinus drainage pathway today i am here to make it simplest for everybody whoever doing endoscopic sinus surgery please feel free to interrupt me ask me never consider frontal sinus as a difficult sinus what we all need to know is the landmarks to consider during frontal sinus surgery identification as well as working around there are lots of fear while working into the frontal sinus see the fear the skull base is very close in the midline see the turbinate which is attached to the cribriform skull base here see the orbit which is very close and see this frontal sinus is basically sandwiched like this between the brain and the orbit and this is so far anteriorly and superiorly situated everything adding on to the complexity so here an angle scope 70 degrees vital in giving you visualization and now considering the radiology see this this is frontal sinus this anterior wall and this floor this floor is formed by this beak the biggest thickest bone in this region is this beak if you are coming from here and see if this beak is not an obstacle you can see easily up into it but this beak is the biggest obstacle and this is a drainage pathway to the you know uh, nasal cavity so this is skull base behind so we have to work in this region so when we come with the endoscope See if you follow the beak, follow the beak, follow the beak. Frontal sinus drain where the beak ends. That's the bottom line. We have to consider. We have to take this structure into consideration as a most important landmark. One can easily identify the beak. I will show you as you see the axilla and go underneath the axilla up. You will find the thickest bone in this region. This is beak. Consider the landmarks which. themselves are easier to identify 
and beak is simplest to identify i'll show you intraoperatively the moment you find the beak you go from here the moment you find the beak where the beak ends has to be frontal sinus no ifs and buts whatever the anatomical complexity variation this is never going to change since beak forms the floor as well as part of the anterior wall where the beak ends from anterior to posterior has to be the frontal sinus drainage pathway so for frontal sinus this beak makes your life simplest we'll go from here we'll see the beak and we'll enter into the frontal sinus in the easiest fashion and see this beak and see the distance from the skull base see this let me magnify and show you see this is beak uh, this is beak this is the frontal sinus drainage pathway from beak when you work from anterior to posterior like here where the beak ends see the skull base is more than a centimeter away you are far off from the skull base if i measure in this patient the distance from here to here is more than a centimeter you don't need to bother about the skull base injury as well as long as you go along the beak hugging the beak and then enter into the frontal sinus superiorly that's the easiest way to identify the frontal sinus and once you in, are into it you can see the cells behind now see in this particular case see this is one of the cell which is attached to the skull base this is skull base this cell is attached to the skull base and has narrowed the frontal sinus drainage pathway see this drainage pathway is narrowed by this cell once you enter into the frontal sinus we are not going to go behind this cell the skull base is behind we will remove this septation and widen the entire drainage pathway from beak to skull base this is the biggest you know drainage pathway you can give you can't measure in centimeter millimeter because every patient's anatomy is different sometime it may be more than 1.5 cm less than 1 cm it depends upon the anatomy what you can do is you can maximize the drainage pathway by skeletonizing from beak to the skull base remove all septations within and you will get the widest one in difficult situation like suppose you have a type 3 cell type 4 cell going up and you need to go behind the cell and remove it under vision this beak is the obstacle in those situation you need to drill this beak and there are variety of procedure described by professor draft that you can do variety of draft 2a 2b 3 modifications of draft lothrop central lothrop mini lothrop subtotal lothrop all this is pertaining to drilling this beak to enter straight forward if i drill this beak coming from here i'll be straight into the frontal sinus even with the you know with any scope the life becomes so easier to enter into if this beak is removed so draft is all about removal of this beak to make your life simple with good visualization of the interior of the frontal sinus so for frontal sinus by and large this is your beak which is the biggest landmark if you see in the coronal plane see this beak if i am going behind going behind as long as the beak is intact above is the frontal sinus now going behind going now see the beak has gone and this is frontal recess now now the beak has gone we are far behind in the most posterior part and this is frontal recess frontal drainage pathway and this is the cell which is uh, you know coming in between which i will show you and remove this this is the cell see in the frontal sinus this cell we have gone so far behind there is no cell inside now as you go behind the cell is projecting which is attached to the posterior wall not to the anterior wall there are group of cells which are attached to the anterior wall suppose there had been any cell attached to the anterior wall we could have seen much anterior see going anterior to posterior no cell coming no cell coming only posteriorly coming means it is attached to the posterior wall and now it is the beginning of the cribriform plate that's the beginning of the cribriform plate now as you go behind this is all ethmoidal septations this is the turbinate on both side this is upper bony nasal septum looks little deviated that's the turbinate attached to the cribriform plate at the junction of this is lateral lamella this is medial lamella medial lamella lateral lamella at the junction of this so this uppermost part of the middle turbinate has to be handled 
very very gently to prevent csf leak the fracture over here and csf leak now as you go behind this all it's moidal cavity now you see see this was the frontal here going behind this is the cribriform plate beginning going further behind 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 at the posterior most part see at this level this your medial rectus muscle inside this is superior oblique far posteriorly here 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 there is a slight beaking where the anterior ethmoidal artery leads there is not very prominent in this case but sometime we'll, we have number of cases so we'll see all variations probably and see where the anterior ethmoidal artery leaves the orbit to the lateral lamella and brain the cribriform plate ends that means this vessel runs along the posterior most part of the anterior ethmoidal roof you don't need to frighten you know don't get frightened this artery is in the far most posterior part of the anterior ethmoidal roof so while walking towards the frontal sinus you don't need to terrify about the artery see this this artery is far far behind here and now once you cross the artery go behind that's the posterior ethmoidal beginning the roof of the posterior ethmoidal begins ethmoid begins all posterior ethmoidal cells and then this see all opacification complete opacification this is all mucosa secretion probably polyps whatever and see the deviation of the nasal septum so this cavity looks more roomy as compared to the this one so what you can do as per the decision making concern we'll do left side first then do some limited septal correction to acquire more space on the right side and then go ahead with the right side as you go behind see the sphenoid sinus so this particular patient is having bile by and large pen sinusitis polyposis massive inflammatory disease unlikely to be controlled by any medical treatment for which for that matter we have only weapon is steroid as far as the medical treatment is concerned no. so that's the only thing which we can do for this patient that remove all this inflammatory load establish the ventilation drainage of the paranasal sinuses to re establish their normal physiology and says this is inflammatory disease which requires steroids at every point of cascade of crs you know development it is driven by certain cytokines and inflammatory mediators and at every level it is the steroid which works so with this kind of events you says establish the ventilation drainage it gives you a great opportunity for the topicals to push inside the polytopicals can penetrate inside deep into the sinuses so need for the oral steroid can be much much reduced so that's the three prong goal of sinus surgery let's begin we'll see all variation we'll discuss more and more variety of endotypes of the crs when you have number of cases you can expect good variety as well so this is in brief about the radiology the case is uh, ramesh ready the first case is ready so any any question on radiology yes hello i am dr sunil uh, how yes, sir. how will you define difficulties of frontal sinus surgery ki what the level of difficulty one will face during surgery can we decide on the ct yes how we can decide that the, what is the level of yes. see the <laughs> biggest difficulty i told you that's why i purposely mentioned is its location so the fear of complication in this in this case it is what is your level of difficulty is a straight forward uh, case i don't see much difficulty what you need to do is see this cell attached to the skull base has yes. to be flushed okay so ct will tell you what kind of cellularity is there in the frontal recess complicating it is all ct scan which makes the life you know straight forward that whether it is difficult or not suppose there had been a cell going up far over laterally up and laterally i would need to remove this uh, beak then it would be a little complex to drill away the beak it's not difficult but you need more time more equipments more high speed drill more you know invasive procedure as compared to a regular face so it all depends upon the ct scan you need to be good at ct scan need to read yourself you can't expect you know all these details from the radiologist 
radiologists are blinded by the you know clinical information blinded by the need of the surgeon radiologists do not know what we are going to perform radiologists do not know what are our difficulties what information we want so huh. they don't generally focus on the you know details of the paranasal sinus ct scan if radiologists report in this patient if you see they will report as a bilateral pan sinusitis they will never report that this patient's cribriform plate is like this lamella is this this cell is attached to the skull base all these details are not going to be given by them so their report for us carries no value as simple as that the valuable thing which we want from the ct scan is the anatomical detail in the dynamic fashion and that is something you need to do yourself radiologists are never going to provide and for that i think we should always say i mean request radiologist to get a dicom view that we should always yes. ct yes CT so always view. always get describe your ct scan as a 0.5 0.6 0.7 whatever some millimetric available on the machine depending on the quality of the machine some millimetric high resolution ct scan of paranasal sinuses in dicom format ask in dicom format then you put in this software and reconstruct yourself so every ent surgeon who are interested in face should must have laptop at their side yeah. so otherwise see if you go to the print out you cannot relate in all three planes so easily in this way you can relate each and every structure to each other in all three planes let me show you you know it is it makes your understanding of learning the ct scan much much easier suppose this is the cell this is the cell suprabullar cell now see how it will look like in all planes you can see very well through this you cannot see what cell is what in all planes on print outs Yes. A twenty centimeter area scanned by and large uh, for the scanning from up to down from here. See, from here to here, twenty centimeter area is scanned from here to here, okay. and from here to here also the same twenty centimeter area is scanned. Now with point five mm section, imagine in one plane, in axial plane, in point five mm, you need four hundred slices. For twenty yeah. centimeter, for two hundred millimeter, twenty centimeter means two hundred millimeter. You in point five mm section, you need four hundred slices, four hundred axial, four hundred coronal, four hundred sagittal, twelve hundred, twelve hundred in bone window setting, twelve hundred in soft tissue window setting, twenty four hundred slices. If a patient carries a print out, mm, he will need a big bag. and a person to carry to carry 2400 slices he will need at least more than 100 print outs and to go through those print outs the surgeon will need at least 6 to 8 hours and again if you want to go back to the same finding again you need 6 to 8 hours so that is practically impossible and that too at the end of the day static not dynamic so that is not even discussable matter that the dicom format is the way to understand the details of the anatomy and extract maximum valuable information hello hello so, so which are the softwares that are available for viewing this i can see we can see that it's uh, you're using the radiant viewer here are there yeah. any good softwares which can be installed this is radiant dicom viewer hmm this is she mentioned about the radiant dicom viewer and this is versatile in uh, accessing all sorts of dicom files from ct scan mri from uh, cone beam ct scan from various you know radiological uh, machines whatever uh, you scan that is accessible thank you sir so we can uh, continue the discussion during surgery as well feel free to interrupt me i know maximum of the audience you all you do sinus surgery so please bring forward with the difficulties and suggestions uh, you face in your day to day practice 
or any questions or anything in your mind for the benefit of everybody so in couple of minutes we are uh, coming with you uh, with the endoscopic picture नहीं नहीं मैं तो खोलता हूँ वैसे भी खोल देता हूँ ना चप्पल की जरूरत ही मेरा फोन आ रहा है यार एक हमारे को जज की वाइफ को ऑपरेट किया था परसों दो बार बार फोन करता कोई कोई चीज को ना करता हूँ सीटी स्कैन है ना ये पता नहीं क्यों अभी भी प्रिंट आउट में लोग मंगाते हैं इतने सारे अपने हो चुके सेशंस हम्म अभी भी लोग है ना प्रिंट आउट नहीं छोड़ रहे हैं पीछे समझ रहे मेरी बात दैट इज द गुड वे डायकॉम से पीछे लोग छोड़ ही नहीं रहे अभी मतलब वो डायकॉम नहीं पकड़ रहे अभी में सर अपने
हेलो ओटी डॉक्टर फारूक फारूक को बुला रहे हैं हेलो हेलो या फारूक या क्या कर रहे हो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग देयर सर वी आर जस्ट इन अ मिनट वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द केस सर इज वेयरिंग ग्लव्स व्हाट आर द केसेस फारूक फॉर टुडे वी हैव ऑल फेस्ट केसेस लाइंड अप सीएसएफ लीक राइनोस प्रोडसिस मे बी इनवर्टेड पैपिलोमा एंड रेस्ट इथमोइडल पॉलीपोसिस फुल रेंज ऑफ एंडोस्कोपिक साइनस सर्जरी यस फुल एंडोस्कोपिक साइनस सर्जरी पूरी ऊपर हो जाएगी तो सेफ जे ने हेलो हां यस डियर यस बॉस सो लेट मी नो व्हेन यू गेट द एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर वी आर गेटिंग विद व्हाट हैव यू पैक्ड इट व्हाट इज द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ सीटी सिंपल एडलिन और जेलोकेन बिथ्रलिन इफ इट इज द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ दिस बेसिकली पैक्ड हां वेरी गुड बेसिकली saline with adrenaline topical solution of saline mixing adrenaline into it making two is to one solution this is not old patient depending upon the you know age and cardiac status and other things we choose the concentration of topical topical is very safe we never inject see now what i'm using merosel as a carrier to carry the saline adrenaline the aim is not to pack tightly aim is to apply adrenaline everywhere see this dosto we do merosel is the medium this is so soft this you can negotiate into any narrow space it swells up open up the area see the nasal cavity opens up okay so there is no the beauty of merosel so we should not do tight packing na never if you pack tightly it is counterproductive it can give venous congestion and that venous bleeding is difficult to control okay so our aim is to apply adrenaline topically that's our aim see this i am applying all over to the mucosal surface everywhere and this topical application if you do it adequately decongest the surface capillaries as the major source of bleeding in sinus surgery is capillary not big arterial bleeding and this topical decongestion is uh, very very effective even the first application of the topical leads to constriction of the vessels constriction of the capillaries to prevent systemic absorption of adrenaline over here and see this is all topical application just mop up all over wherever you want for couple of minutes see the same marrow cell we cut the marrow cell two marrow cells in 7 8 10 pieces different sizes then dip the marrow cell piece into that solution use it remove it rinse in the saline squeeze it and then dip in the same solution again and reuse it during the entire surgery this is how you can you know use the same solution there is no point in using pressure no point in keeping for long even the application of the adrenaline topical on the surface for couple of seconds is equally good effective as compared to application for couple of minutes because the initial couple of seconds decongest the capillaries and that's what the effect we want generally how many ampules of adrenaline do you need we do we need during surgery how many generally Depends. during the bilateral phase you may need eight to 10 ampules but no injection only topical this is pure topical application see this preparation is very very important this preparation for this kind of 
surgery is required to optimize your surgical field the nasal cavity is so rich in vascularity and this being inflammatory disease leads to more and more inflammation vasodilatation and leads to more and more bleeding you have seen in ct scan the safety margin in this surgery is very less as these paranasal sinuses are so strategically situated all along the skull basin orbit yes even a fraction of millimeter disorientation can lead to major complication even fatal complication disasters and that is how this good visualization can certainly prevent this so what all is needed all the time is perfect visualization and this is achieved by the good surgical field and for that preparation should start days or weeks before surgery the aim is to reduce the inflammation pre operative setting in pre operative setting what you can do to reduce the inflammation as we discussed earlier steroid steroid works at every level of the crs cascade and reduces inflammation so what is the duration of pre or pre operative medication see depending yeah. upon not hard and fast depending upon the patients uh, you know uh, how you fix up the surgery sometime long distance patients you have to operate early so 5 to 7 10 days even 15 days if possible uh tapering session you can give a simple prednisolone and you can certainly optimize the feel uh, so what happens generally ki once we give a steroid and patient symptom dissolve resolve yes. and patient flee away they don't, they don't the patient then do I not find continue the treatment uh, of surgery yes <laughs> see okay. that's how you have to counsel the patient two things to be counseled in sinus surgery those are myths otherwise number one like you ask for the preparation we have to counsel the patient the best time the optimum time to operate would be when you become absolutely asymptomatic yes and that is achieved by giving steroids oral steroids saline washes and if there is any secondary infection associated with the addition of antibiotics so of when you become much clinically better asymptomatic then would be the best time to operate then you may not feel like getting operated and that would be the optimum time number 1 if you operate in the present setting with lots of inflammation disease you have more chances of complication okay number 2 this surgery is not the end to the treatment this is the beginning of the treatment this is something another myth you have to counsel your patient the surgery as i said has a three prong goals number one to reduce this inflammatory load this is pure medical disease you need to explain your patient pure medical disease for which in the present times the only weapon we have is the steroids if you give steroid patient will become asymptomatic okay. like i give you an example So what is the dose? Know. What is the doses of uh, asteroid? Can dose um, dose in the and duration that you have already described it depends. What is the dose? Is it tapering dose or same dose continuously? What is your same tapering dose? Always tapering. So for how? Always tapering to prevent withdrawal symptoms. For first five after first five days, seven days, ten days. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to taper the prednisone. We give pure plain prednisolone and you have to taper it accordingly to day one. you have to start with a full dose in a once a day uh, manner okay rather than in dividing doses you have to give prednisolone once a day full dose and then after the, with the time you have to keep dose every gram per kg body weight na no? 1 mg per kg okay so what example i was trying to give you to counsel and to uh, patient, how how to care about the diabetic patient who are suffering from diabetes uh, those are uh, those are difficult patients for um, from many regions for that matter the given uh, the need of the steroid to add on to the problem is one of the reasons to add on to the complexity okay. but diabetic patients are overall immuno compromised patients okay then this is a immune complex disease see the inflammatory disease driven by certain cytokines anything which improves the overall immunity will have a positive impact on the treatment 
any condition which worsens the immunity is going to affect the treatment negatively so diabetes is one of them in this surgery is much needed in diabetic patient other uh, as compared to the non diabetic because you ultimately make the topicals effective to enter into the depth of the sinuses to avoid the need of oral steroids in diabetic patients in unoperated situation how will you give steroids for long so this is a more stronger indication for diabetic patients to undergo sinus surgery so that topicals can penetrate in the depth of the sinuses so do you use antibiotics pre operatively in uh, in your sometimes sometimes um, you know as a part of preparation when you have associated obvious secondary infection though antibiotics are not the first line treatment see what i am doing i am removing the luminal polyps to make my anatomy much better sir another question uh, we have been seeing that you have taken lot of time mopping the mucosa with the adrenaline saline solution yes. so is there any particular advantage in mopping the mucosa for such a long time rather than compared to leaving the same pack inside in different yeah, so places i want to apply it all over since this marrow cell has the ability to enter into the narrow narrow spaces hmm. and then swells up and opens up the area so better you applied everywhere mop everywhere so it opens up the space and makes your you know identification of the landmarks much much easier see now yes sir. the movement i remove the you know these visible polyps luminal polyps see the anatomy has become much you know better earlier no structure was identifiable you know now we see once the polyps have been removed you can identify lots of structure i'll enumerate yes sir see now again at every point of time after every step you can place the same marrow cell as a topical solution now this is the inferior meatus this is the inferior meatus see this underneath this bile tabinet yes sir we can see it the clear. only important structure which opens up here is the nasolacrimal duct this is inferior tabinet this is the anterior flat area into the nasal cavity then is the first prominence you will see here this is the first prominence that belongs to the nasolacrimal system yes and sir. behind that behind that is going to be the uncinate process this is the uncinate process can you see yes sir behind the uncinate is a slit like opening that is hiatus semilunaris which opens into a three dimensional space laterally that is in front the bulum where in the maxillary sinus ostium opens yes sir behind that is the bulla ethmoidalis see all the landmarks and here close to the septum in the middle turbinate which is one of the most important you know landmark throughout the surgery for many reasons yes so the, more and more you identify the landmarks properly less and less chances are of complications this surgery the safety quotient is very low the slightest orient disorientation can lead to major complications so be extra careful and the thing which prevent complications is the visualization that's why all this preparation is required intraoperatively besides this topical marrow cell for the capillary you know vaso constriction the other thing which is required as a yes sir so from the anesthesiologist side we request them to keep the heart rate lower side to yes. reduce the overall cardiac output to reduce the overall you know the capillary bleeding vitals of this patient and down to 60 around 60 ha huh? how much sir the so we want the heart rate to be around 60 or even lower and how about bp bp we don't look at we operate in normal tensive conditions we don't um, you know we have given up using uh, hypotensive anesthesia because you never know which patient is cardiovascular labile and hypotension can lead to uh, you know okay, uh, problem cardiovascular issues in patients who are who have compromised coronaries or any other thing or in yes. such a benign condition you can't afford to you know uh, have such kind of take risks cardiovascular so issues yes 
But do you have any particular preference of like you know? There's a lot of talk going about like uh, GA, LA, GA, LA. Always any... GA now. LA had its advantages in the beginning. Yes, it has the re- the biggest advantage in LA is you get the patient's feedback the moment you cross your limits. Mm-hmm. Means, moment the surgeon crosses the paranasal sinuses to enter the orbit. Moment the surgeon crosses the paranasal sinus to approach, uh, cross the skull base, patient will invariably experience pain, okay. in spite of the best local anesthesia you have given, and that's an amazing feedback to the surgeon that he has crossed the limit. Oh, all right, sir. We have to reassess what what wrong has happened, and then you can accordingly correct. So that is the feedback. The problem with the local anesthesia is your, uh, you know, airway, operation mm-hmm. from the patient, comfort level from the patient. You know, your airway is at stake. Nowadays, the comfort is a much better issue. Patient comfort, airway is more secure under general anesthesia. And now, with the advancement in the anesthesia techniques, anesthesia drugs. You get the same surgical field with the general anesthesia as compared to local anesthesia. So by nowadays, by and large, it is almost always general anesthesia. General anesthesia is better. Thank you, sir. Now see, uh, but the field, uh, see, hello. after every step, after every step, you have to mop like this. Yes, boss. Uh, Doctor Ahila Swami from South. He advocated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the sinus rays should must be done under local anesthesia. Oh, boss, nice to see you. <laughs> Pleasant surprise, I didn't know. Yes. I am here to have you. Your comments are uh, valuable, boss. Feel free to make any time. So this is our first step that we did the luminal clearance and identification of the landmarks. Now in any sinus surgery. Sir, yes, so there is a question, important question regarding the unseen head. Here, the situation is straightforward. You can identify the unseen head so easily. See this? In yes. situation when there is massive polyposis obliterating the middle meters, the osteometal area, massive disease behind in the maxillary sinus pushing the unseen head, all these things can lead to distortion of the unseen head. And it becomes so difficult to identify the unseen head sometimes. So how you can manage that? Number one, see, unseen head is the only structure which is mobile in the entire lateral nasal wall. See in the lateral nasal wall, the first structure is nasolacrimal. It is not mobile. Bulla behind, not mobile. It is the unseen head which is the only mobile structure. What yes. my point? Yes. This sir. mobility is one thing which makes the identification of the unseen head much, much easier most of the time. This is very important. This unseen head is a very important structure. The first part of the surgery is unseen head me, and it is important for many, many reasons. It's not a simple procedure. It's not a less important procedure. I tell you, a complete unseen head me is required to prevent recirculation phenomena, number one. Even the remnant of the unseen head can lead in, uh, invite a lot of problems. Number two, the upper insertion of the unseen head. If in uncommon situation, if it is inserted to the turbinate or skull base or anywhere, inadvertent fracturing can lead to a distal fracture and CSF leak. So you have to be very careful. Okay. Number three, this unseen head is very close to the upper part of the unseen head. See, unseen head is two parts. This upper vertical part and lower horizontal part. See this lower horizontal part of the unseen head? Yes, sir. This is upper vertical part. And now this is the lower horizontal part which is going like this to the either to the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone or even to the uh, it merges with the inferior turbinate, whatever. It ends there. Ill defined. So this upper part of the unseen head is very close to the orbit. Your lateral limit of the entire uh, sinonasal corridor is the orbit and this upper part of the unseen head is very, very close to it. If sometimes it is more close and you are not aware of it, you can get an accidental orbital entry. 
even at the beginning of the procedure at the time of onsenectomy you get the orbital prolapse fat prolapse orbital you know entry complication and that can affect the temperament of the surgeon even sometimes i am if the surgeon is not very experienced may have to abandon so this onsenectomy is a very very important step it may not may not look so important but it is believe me this is one of the most important step to carry out a proper adequate safe onsenectomy see now the picture is very clear yes sir it's quite clear and the reason is see yes. this intermittent saline wash mopping keep the field like this this is the most important requirement now this is your upper part of the ancinet this is your hyter seminary see this yes sir and this is going towards the infundibulum so my first part of this surgery is this removal of the ancinet what i'll do first i will divide the ancinet see i am using a reverse biting engaging into it this hyter seminary turning it little down to stay away from the nasolacrimal system as if you turn it down it is more away from the nasolacrimal duct to prevent uh, being unnecessarily bitten into it see now bite through it advance bite through it advance bite through it feel advance the moment you come across the hard bone you need to stop and reassess the reason being this can be a dangerous step if you bite through the hard bone that is nasolacrimal duct see now see the where the maxillary sinus ostium is let me clear it and show you better can you see this yes sir. let me remove this little bit of the ancinet to open up see the ancinet plate of the bone see this and this is your maxillary sinus can you see very clear yes it's quite uh, very clear on the screen this is the lower horizontal part which is i told you this is ill defined most of the time that's your a uh, beginning of the surgery we call it as a middle meatal entrostomy there are many ways to do it the same thing see the goal is complete ancinet removal the size is defined by the pathology the size of the middle meatal entrostomy is dictated by the pathology see the mucosa inside this is not a very you know massive disease inside like fungal disease or aerd or anything which require more extensive you know topical steroid more extensive uh, you know follow up everything so in a more extensive disease like i mentioned we need to create a bigger entrostomy that is mega middle meatal entrostomy so that you can follow that in your opd with your endoscope easily you can push more larger amounts of topical steroid entering the maxillary sinus more simpler way you can make the steroid reaching inside so that is how the size of the middle meatal entrostomy is defined this is a regular you know you call it type 1 type 2 whatever if i go behind and flush it to the posterior wall it is called type 2 if i remove this even the part of the inferior turbinate to flush it with the floor people consider it type 3 and if i remove the entire medial wall is considered type 4 so depending upon people have defined this differently but the goal is same to create a good middle meatal entrostomy sir the nasolacrimal bone it's quite it would be it's quite hard and but if someone accidentally uh, injures that bone then what should be done yeah that's a very important question see nasolacrimal duct even if you bite through many a time surgeons do not realize what they have done and patient do not present immediately with any problem mm -hmm. but if you bite through it leads to scarring in the duct and that scarring in the duct i will show you the interior of the sinus with a 70 degree later okay See the interior the sinus now so if you bite through the patient will not have any problem in the immediate you know post op period or intraoperatively or anything but due to the scarring given see now this is the upper part of the ancinet 
I told you this is very close to the orbit. See what I am doing? Going behind it, behind it, and fracture, fracture it anteriorly away from the skull base. There is a very very safe movement. You can see. See this? Away from all critical structures behind. There are many ways to do it. I could have used the through biting as well, but to me, I find this the simplest way. Now see what I was telling. This is orbit. Yes. The moment you remove this, you are closest to the orbit. In situations like hypoplastic maxillary sinus and all that, you, you are more close to the orbit, and in those situations, you have to be more careful through bite. So this is how you can uh, people do differently. See, this is the unseen bone inside. See this? Yes, sir. So do you use removal of the upper part of the unseenate? See this. And define this is my lateral limit of the entire paranasal sinus corridor. And that's a very, very useful landmark. Flushing this. Here is the bulla. And here is your axilla. See this axilla? Yes, sir. I am opening more and more axilla. That is where the upper part of the turbinate is attached to. This first part of the turbinate lying in the sagittal plane. Give me a pack. See now what I have done. What I have done, complete unsynectomy. Middle meatal entrosomy so far. Now this middle turbinate is a great landmark here. This is this is lying in all three planes. This is the sagittal plane where it is lying. This is attached above to the axilla over here, to the frontal process of axilla, and up and behind it is attached to the. I showed you on CT scan to the cribriform plate at the junction of medial and lateral lamella. So, how much do you open the axilla? Like, what defines the limit? Yeah. So my limit of the axilla is when you reach the hard bone, that is beak. That's what I'm coming to to simplify the frontal sinus surgery. Beak is the simplest landmark to identify, simplest landmark to follow, and you can really, you know, carry out the sinus surgery in the simplest manner. So open up the beak thoroughly, and then I will switch to 70 degree. In this way, this is my bulla, and I'm keeping leaving this bulla like this. See this, keeping the bulla intact. See this bulla, this goes up like this towards the skull base. See the bulla, how it is going up. Yes, sir. This is going up to the skull base. The reason for leaving this bulla intact is a technique which was initially propagated by Professor Dharmvi Sethi that keeping this bulla intact. Where the bulla goes to the skull base, entrithmoidal artery courses behind the upper attachment of the bulla. I told you during CT scan, the entrithmoidal artery courses in the roof of the posterior most part of the entrithmoidal cavity. What's my point? Can you reduce the heart rate? Heart rate. So, entrithmoidal artery courses. Through the part of the entrithmoidal roof, far behind, and this attachment of the bulla to the entrithmoidal roof is much anterior. So, as long as you keep this bulla attachment intact and work in the frontal sinus, you are far off from the entrithmoidal artery automatically. So, if you keep the bulla intact, your entrithmoidal artery is automatically protected while doing a frontal sinus work. What's my point? Total. See now, this is bulla, yes. prominent bulla. Even this turbinate is very prominent. Can you see? Yes, sir, we can. Sometimes such turbinates are paradoxical, hypertrophied. Sometimes they have a cell. Uh, there could be a, a cell into it, probably concha or something. We'll see later on and treat this. This could be a concha inside. So, Never so know. Do you uh, crush the concha if you come across that? The concha we will um, 
either split open or we will uh, use a through cut to remove it see this this prominent this could be concha so now at this point of time i will switch over to 70 degree that is a chote din hai antali mein chote that is a time to switch over to 70 degree to look up towards the beak because beak is my most important landmark now so while you are changing the endoscopes so you spoke about the lamina and say just for the benefit of everyone so if there is minor injury to lamina while dissecting and uh, we can see small orbital fat prolapse do we need to be worried about it like as long as you realize that you have given this complication and stop further fiddling into it it's not a major complication yes it has to heal on its own you practically don't need to do anything to it Okay. Yes, if you try to do any kind of you know manipulation, means if you try to remove more fat which is coming out, or you try to push the fat back into the orbit, would be uh, you know an appropriate, inappropriate, not required, and can invite problems. So don't do anything. Stay away from that area. Don't abandon the surgery. You can work around, but not to fiddle in that area. and keep an eye on the orbit at the same time yes. ask your scrub nurse to keep an eye on the orbit for any sudden proptosis yes sir if any pressure building up in the orbit you have to do something otherwise nothing is required yes of course in the post operative period you need to give a little more antibiotic as you have entered a sterile zone and communicated a inflamed zone into the sterile to prevent orbital cellulitis or any complication further but practically nothing is required to be done see this now can you see yes sir that is your agarneji cell above see that yes sir. now i am changing to 70 degree i will show you the beak level of the beak how to follow the beak to get into the frontal in the easiest manner anybody doing her sinus surgery must be able to do the frontal sinus surgery with equal ease and comfort jutani hello yes sir uh, uh people like especially dr harve harve is uh, use zero degree telescope for all your surgery what's your opinion regarding that yes so uh, there have been uh, you know a lot of work going on working with zero degree is very to easy. Uh, simplify the frontal sinus work yes yes today i will like to see frontal sinus with zero degree from you how to do this because you can teach see, i tell you the person who can teach it can frontal sinus with 70 degree is unbeatable yes zero degree cannot replace because the location of the frontal sinus is such that you need to look into it that cannot be achieved by the zero degree they do a sort of mini kind of a draft by removing this bone but still you can't get into the sinus very easily see that's the agarneji cell which i am removing now see very carefully the simplicity in this approach i am one anybody can identify the axilla easily see this yes sir i didn't use the landmark consider the landmark with themselves were easier to identify see now 70 degree gives us opportunity to look at the anatomy in this region what you need to do is keep your turbinate in view can you see my turbinate yes sir see the lateral limit that is orbit in yes. view see there yeah keeping in between these two limits okay Okay. See, stay in between. Why in between? To prevent complications. If you cross your terminate medially, you can endanger the skull base. Yes. If you cross your lateral limit, this is lamina. Laterally, yes. you can endanger the orbit. So you have to stay in between these two limits, under view, under your visualization, and this visualization is afforded by the seventy degrees. See this. we are yes. looking up by 70 degree can you see yes sir only thing is 
you need to get used to with 70 degree and that is important in your practice you can get used to in cadavers or even in the nasal endoscopic and whatever but get used to 70 degree it is so vital yes sir. then you can work far up inside the frontal sinus without any problem yes sir now see this is your bulla below this is your axilla see carefully yes sir now i am staying between these two limits see this is my focus yes sir let me show you the beak this is the hardest bone in this region see the beak can you see the beak yes sir we can make it out now yeah this is beak and go underneath the beak see this i am working anteriorly far anteriorly underneath the beak and if i go underneath what is there yeah the artery anybody that is frontal sinus can you see the frontal sinus yes yes sir see this is the this is the beak which i have see this is axilla underneath the axilla keep going keep going this is beak and you go beyond the beak that is frontal sinus frontal sinus simplest way to access the frontal sinus ashwini boss sir uh, yes can you see uh, yes very clear now let me uh, show it again see the frontal sinus uh, let me show it and there this was to cell in that area na in ct scan an extra cell in the posterior wall of frontal Pardon? there was a cell in the posterior wall of frontal sinus in this case yeah, yeah. i i will remove that okay what i have shown is the entry into the frontal sinus yes. whatsoever the anatomical variation are yes yes it is never going to change yes again let me um, clean the area and show you what i have done see 70 degree find the axilla see the axilla yes sir anybody can find the axilla yes and see underneath the axilla is the thick bone this is beak can you see that yes yes sir. still there is a little part of that left thickest bone in this region Yes. The biggest advantage is even in a multiple revision, the beak remains intact, being a thick bone. See this thick bone? Yes. And to go underneath the thick bone. Are you going to remove this thick bone? No, it's not needed in this case. Yes, in case needed. In that procedure, I told you, had there been a five, three, four cell going far up, I would remove it. This is the other way means. See this. This is your beak. Beak. The moment the beak ends, you are in the frontal. Can you see? Yes, sir. This is your frontal. I am far deep inside the frontal now. Sinus, yes, sir. So, so this is the simplest way of localizing the frontal sinus, identifying, identifying, and getting into it. So what? That's the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. Now, once you do frontal sinus work. I told you in the beginning, you have to do an adequate work. I can punch out the part of the beak if you see. See, this is the beak. Yes, sir. If it is projecting, you can punch out through this, um, uh, yes. you know, punch. That is articulated punch. Sometimes it is too projecting and that is really helpful. But not always required. So this is my frontal sinus. Now, what yes. is adequate frontal sinus work? I told you in the beginning to flush it with the limits all around. Yes. See, this is my anterior limit. I cannot go beyond that. Can you see? Yes, sir. This is my lateral limit. Lateral limit is what? Lamina. You cannot go beyond that. Yes, sir. Let me skeletonize the lamina to show you. Now, and the median limit is this turbinate. Can you see? Yes, sir. This is your turbinate, and you can flush with the level of the turbinate. You cannot go beyond that. See that? Yes, sir. This is all your frontal sinus. I can widen it behind. I can widen it using a reverse blade. Yes. See that frontal sinus. This is a recess behind. Up is the frontal sinus. Can you see very clear? 
Yes, sir. There should not be any confusion. See the frontal sinus. Now this is a reverse blade. See the so-called adenoid blade. With frontal, with the seventy degree, it becomes a front-facing blade now. It becomes a front-facing blade with a seventy degree. So, which and is now, the opening that we can see um, on the behind? Right? Yes, so, so one is the frontal sinus. And yeah, this is frontal sinus. This, this is the behind opening. This is supraorbital recess. Okay. See, that is the frontal sinus from inside. Everybody. Uh, yes, it goes quite deep in. Uh, behind the frontal sinus is frontal recess. And here is the pneumatization which is going above the orbit laterally. See this? Yes, sir. This is behind the frontal sinus. This is called supraorbital recess. If the supraorbital recess is bigger, it can narrow the frontal sinus opening. Okay, sir. So, if you have a bigger supraorbital recess, what you can do simply remove this party wall. Uh, I, this, yes. this is the party wall between these two. You can remove this party wall to widen your. So, sir, you don't uh, routinely remove that uh, partition wall in all cases. Yeah, I will show you. If you want to widen, you can remove. See why I partly removed? Give me a divider. No, no. A reverse me above the regular one. Regular one. See, that's the frontal sinus per se. That's the supraorbital cell. And yes. I just uh, went through the party wall to remove it partly. You can use a punch. You can use then afterward divider or anything. OK, sir. So, according to the need, you can remove that. That is supraorbital recess. See the supraorbital recess, and that is the frontal sinus. Frontal sinus, yes, sir. Very clear? Yes, sir. Reverse. So, the frontal sinus, again, you see in the retrospective manner. See the axilla. See how we went yeah. into it. See the axilla. Can you see axilla? Yeah. One can easily identify just underneath the axilla. See the thick bone. That is beak. See the thick bone. Yes, and sir. And beyond the beak is the frontal. This anatomy is something which never changes. Yes, sir. So follow the axilla and the beak. This is the God's naturally given landmark. Sir, sometimes uh, there could be uh, like you know, septations inside the frontal sinus, and during surgery, it can be confusing whether we have reached the limit or like fully opened the frontal sinus. So one option is like you know going back to the CT scan, reading the scan, and coming back to the surgery. Yeah, CT uh, scan will tell you everything. In See, case that was the, the let me tell you first of all, I'm coming to your point. That was the cell I told you. See this. This is the cell. Yes, sir. Which I told you on CT scan, which is along the posterior wall. Yes, sir, along the. This cell is along the posterior wall. See this? Yes, sir. And see now, the posterior wall is much better visible now. Yes, sir. That is the cell section. See the frontal sinus much better. That's the cell septation. I'll remove this septation. See this septa. Yes, sir. I have to clear it. See this septation. So, do you advise any uh, like uh, particular instrument to use in the frontal sinus to remove the septations or? Yeah, we have a variety of instruments for the frontal. Any... Long angled instrument, variable angle, 70, 90, 120, because every frontal sinus anatomy is 
different. See this now, the flushed skull base. Can you see? Yes, sir. And see, this is the supraorbital cell. Very, very clear, sir. If you want to further, you know. So, hello. So, what is yes, the supraorbital cell and supraorbital recess? Is there any difference? Supraorbital yeah. cell, supraorbital yeah, recess. If it cell. is, if it is okay. deep pneumatization, okay. the same, the terminology is same, but use according to the depth. Cell is a shallow space, and recess is a deep space. If your supraorbital limitization is far deep, variable depth, then you call it recess. Otherwise, people call it cell. So that's the same terminology according to the extent of pneumatization used. See, everybody. That's the frontal sinus. This is the supraorbital cell. The frontal is up there. Give me a wash. See how supraorbital cell, you know, adds on to the difficulty. See, I am removing this partition. Can you see? Yes, sir. See the party wall being removed? Yes, it's now becoming a very uh, wide cavity now. Yes. See, sometimes, many a time we have seen the supraorbital cell being bigger than the frontal sinus itself. See the frontal sinus now. Yes, sir. Articulated. So, depending upon the need, you can uh, do more and more work. See this beak projection? Yes, sir. I can take away with this special instrument. This is articulated punch. A very stout instrument from the Carl Storch. I've been using for uh, almost 10 years, probably. So is there Same any instrument. particular size that uh, that it comes on, like different sizes or single yeah, size? Yeah, different. Six articulation, nine articulation, 15 articulation even. Which one do you prefer, sir? Like you must be having it. We have all three. According to the need according to the angulation. See the frontal sinus now? Much better? Mm -hmm. See, once you uh, yes. uh, take away the part of the beak by means of punch or anything. Yes, sir. The venous bleeding is likely. Very frustrating also sometimes. Sir. See now the full supraorbital recess. Let me clear a little bit more to give you the full view of the frontal sinus. So, what's the pulse rate right now? Pulse, anybody? Around 88. I request our anesthesiologist to a little bit more if they can bring down. See the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. You see the earlier frontal sinus, what I have done? Communicated with the supraorbital. See this exercise, what even the previous one was adequate space. Yes. But now see, this will give more ventilation, ventilation, drainage, as well as penetration of the topical deep into the sinus. Yes, sir. It will freely penetrate. Now see. Yes, sir. And everywhere the mucosa is intact. See this. Yes, sir. See such a huge frontal sinus opening. Yes, sir. This is what and I, what I have done. See, simple. Again, the landmarks. See this axilla. Yes, sir. Simplest. Anybody can identify axilla. Underneath the axilla, this is beak, 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 and where the beak ends. Front of. Yes, sir. Don't yes. dig your brain into it. This is the simplest one God has given. There is no point in unnecessarily calculating so many things to make your life more and more difficult. Yes, sir. Now, see, this is your bulla. Bulla. I and hope it is clear to everybody. Yes, sir. We are sure patient will feel quite light-headed and relieved from his symptoms, <laughs> headache. Hopefully. After. And see, this is the beginning of the treatment. I tell you, don't consider this is the end of the treatment. 
Yes, sir. This will allow the topical to penetrate. See the maxillary sinus inside. Beautiful, sir. See the maxillary sinus with little of uh, edematous mucosa, which is going to revert. We hope for uh, this mucosa to revert. Yes. So and now, are you going now to? See, take... this is bulla. Your pardon. Uh, I was asking, are you going to take out any part of that uh, mucosa? Does it look uh, unhealthy to you or just edematous, the maxillary sinus? Edematous. edematous. This is because of long term, you know, lack of ventilation, inflammation going on. The moment you re-establish the ventilation drainage, the moment your topical steroid start penetrating into it, going inside, it will revert back to normal. This is bound to come back. Okay, sir. So that was all about the maxillary sinus and frontal sinus. Okay. Yes, sir. Yet we did not do anything to the bulla. At the end, I removed the part of it. See the frontal sinus. Mm. Don't fall into that mystery of how big the frontal sinus opening is required and all. It all depends upon anatomy. Okay. All sir. depends upon anatomy. Now. This is supraorbital recess. See this. We have seen that. This one. Uh, yes. Immediately caudal to the supraorbital. This is a very useful landmark. Immediately caudal to that is going to be your anterior model artery. Immediately caudal. I remove the part of the upper part of the bulla. Let me remove it completely. This is your bulla. See this? Yes. Part of the remnant of the bulla. This is attached to the lamina. See the lamina. So, if you can just take your scope a bit proximal, then yes, yes I will show you. See the lamina. Yes, sir. See the curvature of the lamina, natural curve. Mm -hmm. So, this is attached to the lamina, and you can see the lamina very clear. Yes, sir. So that was the remnant of the bulla. That is the skull base. See the frontal sinus, yes. supraorbital recess. Very clear? Yes, sir. Now I told you reverse. Where the supraorbital recess ends caudally is going to be the anterior model artery. See the anterior model artery. If you, you see. The obliquely coursing artery, I will make it more clearer. So, if you can point out that one. See, this. See this. This is supraorbital recess. Yes, sir. Let me remove this cell a bit there. Let me remove this cell. Section. See the artery underneath. This is the vessel underneath. See the vessel underneath my section. Much clearer now, sir. Let me make it more clearer. I'll just skeletonize from both sides. See the skull base behind? Yes, this sir. This one? Yes, sir. See the supraorbital cell above? Where the supraorbital cell ends is the beginning of this vessel. See above the frontal sinus, yes, sir. then supraorbital, then anterior artery, and then skull base there behind. Can you see very clear? Yes, sir. This obliquely coursing is the vessel, this one, where underneath my Good. spikes of the debrider blade. Sure. This one, this one. Yes, so we can see it very clear. This? Yes, Only sir. Only thing left is to bite through this now, if you want. See this here. Yes, sir. Is completely skeletonized. Give me a marrow cell piece. Beautifully seen, sir. Yeah, so, question here is how to manage if you accidentally injure it. 
see it depends upon the place you injured you have to understand the course let me tell you give me a marrow cell piece see how the area is skeletonized yes just keeping the mucosa intact see that yes sir yes so this anterior quadral artery you need to understand the course to understand the impact of injury this leaves the orbit over here yes. run in the ethmoidal roof it's a branch of ophthalmic artery yes. it run in the roof of the ethmoid to enter the pierce the lateral lamella to enter the intracranial space and then come back in the nasal cavity roof so if this artery suppose gets transected close to its exit from the orbit the artery can retract into the orbit and that's a disaster yes sir if it keeps on bleeding inside the orbit where which is a closed cavity otherwise orbit is by and large bounded by bones from all around except anteriorly yes sir. so if the artery keeps bleeding inside the orbit even a 5 ml extra blood inside the orbit can be good enough to compress the optic nerve and vessel supplying the optic nerve yes sir it what could... my point so artery if retracts into the orbit gives sudden proptosis within a few seconds you will find finds massive proptosis fix i and that is the call to identify and manage it otherwise the patient can develop permanent visual loss permanent visual loss what my point so impact is more dangerous if it is transected laterally close to its exit suppose the artery is transected close to its entry into the lateral lamella means medially yes sir lateral lamella you know is the thinnest part of the skull base yes sir very fragile some millimetric bone lined by the dura inside single layer of dura thin dura even the slightest of the injury to the artery there the injury which has injured the artery can be good enough to injure the lateral lamella and get a csf leak see the course of the artery yes sir so so what should be laterally done? it is dangerous it can retract medially it can lead to csf leak in the middle of the course suppose this vessel is injured it is much safer what all it can give a little bleeding this is a sub millimetric vessel we not practice deal with much bigger vessels we deal with much bigger branches of the carotid and carotid itself this sub millimetric vessel is hardly anything even if it bleeds in the middle of the course you can just pack for a whatever you have the marrow cell surgery cell gel form gauze whatever and forget for a minute or two it goes in spasm if you have a section bipolar you can immediately cauterize and get away but it's not going to give any major complication so what do we learn from this if you have to work in this region but the anatomy is difficult polyps are massive revision situation you are not able to identify the vessel what you can do identify the medial and lateral limit and stay in the middle so even if you injure the vessel you are much safe what my point useful point sir so always define your lateral and medial limit see what my 70 degree is doing so far is giving me visualization yes see sir. the frontal sinus is like a box yes. all limits i can see in one go with 70 anterior limit see this big yes lateral sir. limit medial limit and posterior my 0 degree cannot show this see the interior of the frontal in the depth you can see and work that yes. cannot be afforded by 0 degree and see this mucosal sparing work without any bone drilling cannot be afforded by 0 degree so it has its own advantage people have different ways to do different thing different ways to push different techniques what yeah. they develop that is different but this is pure teaching this is something which is easily replicable anybody the junior most guy in this auditorium can do this because the landmarks of 
so easy to identify yeah lateral cantrotomy is the simplest operation in your nursing staff can do it in case required yeah i will show you when i uh, see the lateral canthus yes sir yes sir idhar no karunga nahi see just take a scissors lift it like this zero day i'll uh, change to zero degree उसी साइड दिखाना क्या इसका हम्म सी आई एम बैक विद जीरो डिग्री सी दिस लैटरल कैंथस कैन यू सी यस सर यूं करना यूं था दोनों तरफ हां सी कैन यू सी द लैटरल कैंथस मच बेटर यस सर टेक अ सिजर्स एंड जस्ट कट दैट्स इट फॉर अ सेंटीमीटर एट द टिल द जाइगोमेट्रिक मार्जिन हियर सी दिस Yes, sir. Just take and cut, and the eye will bulge forward. This immediately reduces the intraorbital pressure significantly. The eye will bulge forward, and whatever the intraorbital pressure will immediately come down. The optic nerve, which might have been compressed, may relax immediately, and can be a good procedure to save your vision. You yes. know? Yes, sir. The simple can be done in ten seconds, less than ten seconds. Anybody can do it. and we must train our you know ot staff to do it sometimes required yes so while you have zero degree scope with you can you show the audience the difference in view between the zero degree and 70 degree yeah yeah, yeah. that's a great point see with a zero degree see with a zero degree this is the obstacle see this very limited yeah yes. see this, you can't see the interior of the frontal sinus mm. but see the space yes. see the mucosal preservation which is most important can you see yes sir that is most important if you remove everything all mucosa then it's not going to heal so easily it is going to heal by secondary intention fibrosis and that is not going to serve mucociliary function there will be lot of crusting crusting will invite infection underlying bone necrosis and so on the see the you know the vicious cycle starts yes sir so we have seen the maxillary sinus we have seen the frontal sinus we have done antiarrhythmoidectomy see now yes sir i hope everything is clear yes sir there is definite difference between the 0 degree and 70 degree view yes now the what sinuses are left to dissect to do a full out ses the postethmoids and sphenoid and now the complexity starts as far as the complications are concerned the you know the most major complications of the sinus surgery most life threatening most uh, disastrous complications happens while doing the postethmoidectomy and the sphenoid walk because of the close proximity of these sinuses to the optic nerve and carotid artery and the skull base as well so you have to be now 100 times more careful while uh, dissecting behind and for this you remember what mosher um, endoscopic uh, the uh, sinus surgeon not endoscopic but the sinus surgeon who described 100 years ago the easiest way to kill a patient is ethmoidectomy that is true while doing post ethmoidectomy if you are not very careful and go behind without realizing you are in the sphenoid one can go and injure the optic now one can go and injure the carotid artery see that so now while doing post ethmoidectomy see now what is there we have done anterior ethmoidectomy what structure is this in front of us this is first part of the middle turbinate Yes. See how this middle turbinate is turning here to second part. This is basal lamella or ground lamella. Ground lamella. To insert on the lamina papyrus. See, this is lamina. Yes, sir. All cells behind those are postethmoid and sphenoid, and they they drain from behind. 
until now what sinuses we have dissected are all we drain anterior to it this is not any anat not only anatomical but physiologically also very important yes it is yes always medial turbinate lamina papricia you can take one more mic in the theater boss you are asking good questions take one more mic in case see this but can you see the ground lamella yes sir. now the million dollar question is where to enter into the posterior mold there are, see the ground ground lamella is from here to here can you see yes sir. and see it is going above to the skull base see yes sir. how it is attached to the skull base this is ground lamella and above it is attached to the skull base can you see here yes sir so here straight. here till here it is attached to the skull this is the ground lamella this is all ground lamella yes, see this is anterior modal artery yes sir i told you the anterior modal artery courses to the posterior most part of the anterior modal roof and immediately after the anterior modal artery here is the attachment of the ground lamella above this is ground lamella this yes. is where my suction is and it is attached to the skull base over here see this very see this plate of bone yes sir so this enter when you see the anterior modal artery a couple of millimeters behind is the ground lamella upper attachment and after that the posterior modal starts what my point yes sir so the anterior modal artery courses to the posterior most part of the anterior modal roof moment yes. you see the anterior modal artery immediately behind is going to be couple of millimeters behind is the ground lamella upper attachment this is ground lamella and this is the upper attachment going see about to the skull base skull base let me puncture and show you so wait see this ground lamella yes. this is upper attachment of the uh, you know part of the ground lamella going above yes. see this ground lamella i have punctured not skull base this is attached to the skull base there yes, yes got sir. my point very clear yes sir so now where to enter into the ground lamella to access the posterior modal cell this that's a question yes. to stay on the safer side we need to define a place mm -hmm. where we can avoid an skull base entry let me show you that's why i poked into there and showed you where exactly the skull base lying now give me uh, sir do you like a very flap technique for the frontal sinus pardon auxiliary flap technique for the frontal sinus opening uh, you like that no sir what what is your idea about auxiliary flap technique for about the, Auxiliary flap technique for the frontal sinus. Auxiliary flap technique I have not uh, practiced. Reason being, the P J Wormall, Professor P J Wormall, um, uh, you know, a phenomenal surgeon. He deserves the highest level of respect for you know uplifting this endoscopic sinus surgery. Introduced earlier when the seventy degree was not popular. In that, what he does is he remove this part of the mucosa. and expose this beak bite through the beak to enter into the frontal you know what you cannot get that kind of view that view what you have seen can be seen only with a 70 degree so those are way outs see now what i have shown is the floor of the orbit can you see can you see the level of the floor of the orbit yes sir or the roof of the maxilla yes sir okay we have to enter into the ground lamella at the level of the roof of the maxilla somewhere here close to the first part of the turbinate, turbinate. where it is which has turned into second part can you see here medially yes sir why so why why initially i am doing so the reason being if this if i don't consider this suppose suppose if i don't consider and go above i can go and hit the skull base this so i am entering into the ground lamella over here see this yes sir lateral we will come across line yes. at the level of the roof of the maxilla see that yes now i am opening it see this these are posterior modal cells you can see now yes sir just to show you i am not doing posterior modal at this point these are the posterior modal cells see that yes sir yes sir why i don't intend to do the posterior modal cell because i have a fear 
if i keep doing post thrombotic acting i never know where i enter into the sphenoid accidentally and i can damage if i go on to the carotids and optic so what i'll do i'll define a landmark this is a a sort of 100% surety that you are not going to unnecessarily accidentally injure all these structures it will keep your orientation much better see now how come see this i will dissect medially open up this window medially more and more medially okay sir and see the structure there can you see something this yes. is your superior turbinate superior turbinate can you see or not yes sir so here i intend to see two structures see this this is your superior turbinate yes sir and this is your nasal septum yes sir see the my window my post it points are left undissected can you see laterally yes sir i want a landmark to know the level of the sphenoid sinus behind this other body i cannot go if i keep dissecting like this i may endanger anything behind there is no way to describe the landmark there so what i am doing i am developing a landmark See this. Every time my same marrow cell sponges soaked in same solution. See the field what we have got. Without injecting, we didn't inject anything, and we got such a brilliant field. Can you see? Absolutely, yes, sir. Absolutely. And ultra safe. We are not injecting anything which can go in the systemic circulation. Yes, sir. Adrenaline happens to enter the systemic circulation. It can have. fatal effects and it has been you know it has been seen published and something we cannot uh, afford to do in such a benign condition sir have you come across like um, while i was working previously in uh, one center so uh, the senior colleague they injected this adrenaline and then uh, like in at the end of the surgery uh the usual fest no complications nothing but the end of the surgery the patient developed fixed pupils and uh, yeah, of... it's not about fixed pupil it is the adrenaline which has uh, you know yes so enter the circulation it gave a scare to everyone the anesthetist yes. was very really scared as was the surgeon yeah see now yes yeah that's why we discourage the uh, injection of adrenaline polyp in the floor now see this is inferior turbinate and this is septum yes sir what i intend to do here is removing the lower most part of the inferior turbinate superior turbinate superior turbinate sorry lower most part which is safe there is no olfactory filaments over it no olfactory mucosa over it see this yes sir this is your nasal septum see this nasal septum yes sir now follow your roof of maxilla again give me the pack again that's a very important uh, point how to enter here safely into the sphenoid sinus what i am looking at the sphenoid sinus ostium in the sphenoid thomoidal recess between the superior turbinate and the nasal septum for that i remove the lower most part of the superior turbinate yes now i am looking for the sphenoid sinus ostium if it is not visible where to look at and what are the significance of this again this landmark of roof of maxilla yes this ostium of the sphenoid sinus is never lying in the floor it is more close to the roof if you don't consider this landmark of roof of maxilla as a line this this as a line i will look for the inferior uh, this sphenoid ostium either the level of this line or below this never above if i look for the ostium above i may endanger the skull base because this this ostium is comparatively more close to the plenum than the floor of the sinus okay sir okay? yes sir always keep this landmark in view all the time see this yes sir now simply another point how to enter into it flush with the septum see my septum yes sir don't go flush to the turbinate see this okay sir Go flush to the septum. That's a very very important point. Go flush to the septum and look for this. 
This is my sphenoid sinus osteum. See, simple. Beautiful, sir. Two points again for the junior colleagues. One, not beyond the level of this line. See, either in this line, yes. at this level of the line or below that. Number one. Yes. The second is flush to the septum, not the turbinate. Yes, sir. This way, you will never miss the osteum. You never end up giving in complications. See now, I am yes. widening it. Now, another important thing while widening is not widen, not to widen too much inferiorly, otherwise it may endanger the vessel, the branch of sphenopalatine, you know, supplying the nasal septum. You can damage. See the sphenoid sinus? Yes, sir. Widen it either medially or little up, not inferiorly much, or you can widen it laterally as much as you want. See this? Yes. The sphenoid sinus. Now, I have not completed my post at me and open the sphenoid sinus. Why so? I know the level of the sphenoid sinus now behind. While doing post at me, what I will ensure now? Not to go beyond the level of the sphenoid ostium. To stay almost a centimeter or more safer from the carotid or optic, depending on the pneumatization. Yes, sir. As long as I stay anterior to the sphenoid sinus ostium level, and do my post me, I am 100 100% safe. Yes. In any given situation, the carotid and optic cannot come anterior to the sphenoid sinus ostium. It has never been observed. Sir, can but, you show us the relationship between the roof of the coena and the sphenoid ostium? That is also yes. important landmark. So that's a question uh, from Dr. Now, Lesh, the relationship between the roof of the coena here, see this? And the sphenoid sinus, ostium. In a standard teaching, which has been, uh, you know, already always taught, this is 1.5 to 2 centimeter, you know, um, uh, above the level of the uh, level of the oh, roof of the coena, and it is true. So that's a vague landmark. Useful sometimes in revision situation, but not a very precise one. See this? Yes, sir. So that is my sphenoid sinus ostium. Now I can finish off my post it for that means no time. Now I have defined everything. My lateral limit is what? Lamina. Lamina papi. Superiorly, we can see attachment to the skull base. See my lateral limit to the lamina. See the disease, the polyps. Yes, sir. Micro debrider is one tool with the best part of it is being mucosa preserving. It cuts sharp, doesn't pull. See how good a mucosa preserving tool it is. See this? Yes, sir. See, this is my ostium level. I can do anything till ostium level. Lot. This is all to simplify and to prevent complications. All these technical modifications are meant for carrying out a safe sinus surgery. See, sphenoid sinus ostium is much behind still. That's the level of the osteothmoid. See that? Now, yes. here I will not cross this like this. See this? If I keep going like this, I can easily damage everything. So, if there is honor or not, if you follow this technique, you are always away from the optic now. See this? See, this is optic now. Uh, this is uh, sphenoid sinus ostium. This is something, this is the limit which I am not going to cross. See now? That's the level of the ostium, that's the level of the cell. If I have to do anything now, I will remove this wall and then do under vision. So, what do you do in case of an ONOD cell like while. Same. Same. ONOD cannot come anterior to the sphenoid ostium. What my point? Yes. So, with this technique, doesn't matter whether there is ONOD or not. Because 
in onodi what would happen this would be directly on to the optic now if you keep going like this would one would hit the optic now easily okay. now here what is protecting us this limit beyond this limit i am not going to do anything there what my point yes sir it protects you like anything see this is the upper attachment of the ground lamella where i poked can you see yes sir which i showed you earlier yes sir we can see it on the screen sir this is the upper attachment of the ground lamella which i am now removing see the cavity becoming a single compartment mucosal eyes compartment protecting everything protecting skull base protecting orbit protecting turbinate everything see the skull base thoroughly yes sir much better picture now through by the see this septations along the skull base i can bite through the through biting through biting is another mucosa preserving tool see that yes sir bite through and make the cavity smooth see now right from the frontal sinus Entry thoracic artery there, see there. Yes, sir. And the, this is attachment of the ground lamella to the skull base. See there behind. Yes, sir. Which I have taken away. See this. Yes, sir. This is all posterior thoracic roof now everywhere. All posterior thoracic activity done now. Very clear. Yes, sir. And this is finally we reach to the level of the spinoid ostium. Right. See Thank now, you. see the cavity. This is sphenoid ostium, and now what I need to do is removing party wall between the posterior thoracic and the sphenoid sinus to widen the sphenoid opening. Do rider, who cut the other one? Do rider. I hope you are getting what I am trying to say. Yes, sir. Anybody having any doubts? or finding any problem in their regular practice carrying out sinus surgery please come forward and share your thoughts sir i would like to as a junior i would like to know one more one more point apart from the thickest identifying landmark about frontal beak other other uh, methods of identifying other methods are follow the aganeji follow the upper attachment of the ancinet Uh, many ways, but those are all variable structures. You can follow them. Those themselves are not, uh, you know, reliable every time. Weak is not variable. Weak is a fixed landmark. So rely on those which are reliable. That's why this technique we follow. Wash. Wash. Now see. Finally, I am here to widen the sphenoid sinus ostium. See the sphenoid. Yes, sir. Keep irrigating. Irrigation helps in hemostasis as well. Washes the inflammatory mediators. It improves the mucociliary activity. It is useful by many ways. See now, finally. See, this is the party wall. Can you see? Yes, sir. The sphenoid sinus there. A section there. No. Too good there. And see, this party wall looks thick. Otherwise, you can remove with the divider. You can remove with the punch. I am using this through biting. See this? Yes, sir. How thick it is. If it is more thicker, straight all the way. You can use a drill also. You can use a Stamberger 
phenoid punch also see this i am using this sir is this a uh, thickness of the party wall uh, just a normal variation or do you find yeah it it's normal it could be sometime because of osteitis as well okay sir carison give me carison see if i can engage my carison that is one of the best tool see this see the thick bone removed yes sir see the divide and now finally this is widening of the sphenoid sinus now under vision i will be using see my divider cutting edges my side not behind yes sir see, this is the safest way of using into the sphenoid sinus away from structure can you see now very clear the sphenoid sinus depth inside yes sir see below the sphenoid this was Osteoid, remove the party wall, and you can see in one view, right from the frontal to the sphenoid sinus, with your medial limit being turbinate, lateral limit being lamina, lamina papyracea. All sinuses opened up, and this is what you need to train your patient post-operatively. Irrigation. See, since steroid is the mainstay of treatment, now the topical which leads out to the actual site of inflammation, that is sinus mucosa. Which is now exposed to topical steroid, which was not earlier in the unoperated situation. So the need of the oral will be said. So you have to tell your patient why you are operating to to avoid the need of oral steroids. See this? So mm -hmm. this is the beginning of the treatment to facilitate medical treatment. You can say surgery is not everything. Don't tell your patient that you will operate and it will be all right. That's a joke. what tell that this will facilitate medical treatment so what is the post operative care advice you give to your patients so mostly it is the steroid irrigation then this disease is like a you know syndrome there are a lot of medical comorbidities associated you have to improve them like allergy you have to treat them by means of skin prick testing immunization immunity issues up to 10% patients are immunocompromised by some or other reason if you don't treat them the disease is likely to come back so there are a lot of comorbidities other issues need to be treated post operatively never tell that the sinus surgery is the end of the treatment to your problem polyps that is the beginning for the adequate treatment you know post operatively in forms of in form of facilitating the medical treatment see that that's my sinus surgery on this side i hope you got i'm trying to say yes sir we so can i'm not showing on the other side as we have number of cases uh, we have multiple theaters other cases probably induced yes what's that csf same marrow cell packs you can place in the by means of soaking into steroid in the ethmoidal cavity see that yes sir so when do you first see your patient post operatively like after discharge after 2 days remove the pack after 7 to 10 days we call them for first debridement of the crust you know yes sir. um uh, we see how effectively the patient is douching to remove the crust blood clots any septation whatever and then after a month now post operatively it's a matter of training patient to do properly in proper position and proper solution see that frontal sinus yes sir see that could be able we will be able could be able to do because of see this the yes. part of the beak we expose by means of removing the axilla thoroughly see this is the beak there can you see the bone there somebody asked about how much the beak uh, the axilla to be open until you reach the beak so what we removed here part of the tip of the middle turbinate attachment part of the agonegi 
all the cells along the beak this is middle turbinate aganigi complex removal and this is called a zero degree frontal sinus visualization approach see that yes then only you can see the frontal sinus to the zero degree can you see this yes very clear this gives you a better opportunity for the topicals to penetrate into the frontal will you like to vulgarize in this case because sometimes uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's it looks good it looks good it depends there are many ways to treat the middle turbinate the best is to respect it to me it looks stable can you see this yes if you want to you can do lot of procedures i don't know what if there is a concave what what the extreme you can do let me show you that is the end treatment i will do a partial resection see okay. this leaving the upper part see that yes leaving the upper part as a landmark this will facilitate further see this concha can you see the mucosa inside yes yes very clear see this is mucosa inside see the concha see this yes, yes very small concha so this will facilitate now the topical penetrating much better see that yes so this resection is routine in your surgery yes this you know it has been observed nowadays that if you do a little bit partial resection in massive disease it facilitate your topical penetration deep much better see for such a massive disease there is no harm in doing this see this now my turbinate is never going to fall Okay. And block the ethmoidal cavity. Can you see? See the turbinate looking much better now. Yes. It it cannot fall laterally to block the ethmoidal space. See that? Yes. Yes. The right state. See, there is no harm in doing it without uh, you know any complication. You can do it. See this. Now the now as we know, sinus is front of. Us. Yeah. Pardon? Now front as we know, sinus is in front of us. As we know, sinus. See that. See the upper part of the coina here. Straight forward, and the spinoid around two centimeter. It's variable from one point five to two centimeter. Sir, please show the interior of maxillary sinus in seventy. See now, this is all clear now. Some people are everything. interested. You in... put your zero degree in an outpatient department, and you Hello? see everything. Hello. No need any radiology. Hello. Yes, boss. Uh, some delegates are interested in seeing the interior of maxillary sinus with seventy degree. I have shown you. You want to see again? Okay. If you, if you want to see it, see it again. Okay. Let me mop it and show you. Let me mop it and show you. Body ball problem. See, there is no bleeding. I'm just mopping to show you better. Summer salting this marrow cell inside. Give me a wash, sir. Uh, one question. So, what's the maximum limit of uh, the maximum posterior limit of MMA? Posterior limit is up to the posterior wall of maxilla. You cannot go beyond that. Behind is the terigo belt and fossa. Then, okay, sir. Okay, give me seventy degree to show. If you have a far lateralized disease, inaccessible by endoscopic instrument, you can add on a canine fossa uh, puncture. See, boss, this yes. is all a little bit of the polypoidal boggy mucosa. This is going to revert. This is not irreversibly damaged pathology. See this? 
this is boggy mucosa can you see yes sir clear or not this is interior yes. of the maxillary sinus yes sir very very yes, clear sir. sir we can see everything uh, and that is the frontal sinus above see that yes sir cavity is very very stiff form close to the septum never going to fall now laterally that's the ethmoidal roof see that entire ethmoidal roof everything you can see with a 70 and 0 see this yes sir that's a final picture of after full house says we once you do this kind of a job you can give your patient a sort of indirect guarantee indirect guarantee means tell them that you have to follow with a topical medication treatment of comorbidities if any allergy or anything immunity disorder anything ard desensitization whatever and keep irrigations if you do it because now no need of oral steroid or a topical are reaching they're not going to develop a need of a formal sinus surgery procedure again see in this now we yes. have done everything to the limits yes. what is left there for the future sinus surgeon now nothing nothing even if the patient stops the irrigation develop boggy mucosa polyps whatever you can give a short course of oral steroid and do a you know minimal uh, uh, polypectomy debridement in your office that's it and start the topicals again yes, a formal sinus surgery will never be required got my point yes sir so, so that's an indirect sort of guarantee not a direct one that you cannot develop this disease you have to follow the post operative treatment but you will not need any formal sinus surgery because all bone work has been done we have yes. reached to the limits everywhere what is left there for the future sinus surgeon nothing we are on the skull base orbit everywhere skeletonized nothing more is left behind in future sir for the benefit of the delegates who have joined late can you please mention again like how uh, how do you determine the size of the mma how big it should be ye yeah, hata do uh, determine the size of mma like yeah. for this condition this was minimal inflammatory disease in the maxillary sinus You don't need to do unnecessary and enlarge MMA. Had there been fungus, I would definitely enlarge it. I want more topical to penetrate. I want more, uh, you know, um, uh, long-term visualization, long-term follow-up. If I have a tumor or anything behind, I would do even much bigger to clear the tumor and keep an eye for the future recurrence. So it all depends upon the pathology. For a regular sinus disease, you don't need. Ah, uh, boy, this was minimal maxillary sinus pathology. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, sir we can't see anything on the screen here. It's gone blank. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, we are we are not uh, showing on the other side. Oh. Other side is going to be uh, done by somebody, and we'll move on to the next case. Sir, what will be the concentration uh, of a steroid and uh, other solution in post-op care? Phone, please, sir. I don't know what is the what what will be the concentration of the steroid and other like NS or what in post op care what we will be advising oh, the patient. See, since it is topical, so it is pretty safe. Yes. But still, the concentration we are going to give is a uh, something like we mix in saline, so almost point five millimeter a day. You are introducing that to topical. So we use budenafs side. Our respules, which are uh, generally meant for nebulization for asthma, you mix them in saline, and twice a day we recommend. And the total dose, topical, we use every day is 0.5 milligram. So it is much much safer. That too only topical. So it doesn't affect the HPA axis. Been studied in long term uh, trials. It's pretty safe. Like in five lit, five hundred ml of NS. How many respules of budecord should be used? So one milligram in a uh, two milligram in a liter and two fifty ml a day. So it is point five milligram per day. Thank you. And see the duration. It all depends upon the underlying pathology. You have to keep an eye, follow up regular endoscopic follow up. If the mucosa is reverting back to normal. 
you can keep reducing the concentration and frequency if it is not you can even increase because topicals are safer than giving orals nasal sprays are not going to penetrate the limitation of the nasal spray is nasal sprays do not cross beyond anterior one third of the nasal cavity there is no fun in giving nasal sprays post operatively they do not enter deep into the paranasal sinus they don't cross beyond one third of the nasal cavity anterior one third in the pre op setting we are sinuses are blocked not opened up we are left with only choice nasal spray that's why the sprays are not able to control the inflammation and we have to resort to surgery so what the uh, uh, traditional teaching is if your medical treatment doesn't control then surgery requires and the medical treatment core medical treatment in pre operative setting is only topical steroid so if they don't control the inflammation inflammation is too much you have to resort to surgery so when we are talking like thank you sir wonderful surgery and it was a treat to our eyes looking thank forward you to for your attention surgery. thank you all very much for your attention thank you sir हेलो हेलो
हेलो हेलो ओटी Thank 
हेलो हेलो ऑडिटोरियम हेलो हेलो यस वी आर रेडी यार यस बॉस सो आर यू गेटिंग समथिंग ऑन स्क्रीन वी आर गेटिंग द सिटी सिटी पिक्चर ओके सो इन ब्रीफ दिस पेशेंट इज अ ट्वेंटी टू ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल who had been operated earlier for uh, some nasal issues some nasal mass okay on we which... don't have any histopathology of that on sa- on same side left side uh, it's uh, probably 2 years back 2 and 1/2 years okay. and no histopathology with us mm. presently she has a uh, nasal mass on the left side yeah with this kind of ct scan no pre operative biopsy we have see yeah. the nasal mass yes 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 so very wide millimeters yeah. of it. and see the thing is it is in the maxillary sinus oh, i'm going to the ballooning in the nasal cavity oh. this is um, yes, see yes. the opacification in the sphenoid and the frontal this could be secondary or just section block, also just blockage but we don't have mri so we cannot discriminate whether it is a mass polyp or sinusitis whatever okay, but there is a mass polyp na no? but there is yeah. mri is must for such cases to differentiate whenever we need soft tissue discrimination soft tissue details okay. mri is the answer okay. by means of various sequences of mri we can differentiate much better yeah. in among soft tissue masses whether it is a simple polyp tumor benign tumor malignant tumor everything can be discriminated okay now they are suspecting some csf leak also because she complains of unilateral some discharge but yes. to me it is unlikely to be so and the skull base looks intact yes. we don't have mri also we don't have any biochemical examination okay. so it is it could be because of this mass only some discharge coming out may not be csf now the beauty is see anteriorly this is opacification in the frontal and the frontal recess yes but posterior ethmoids are ultra clear yes. see yes. the sphenoid absolutely clear see the sphenoid little little inflammation yeah post ethmoid see ultra clear yes. it is mostly in the anterior part coming out of the maxillary sinus could be simple polyp as well let's see what it can be could okay. be some infected polyp could be some tumor uh, got only lows tumor because there no widening except yeah. middle is, is opening yeah. so we are lacking pre op histopathology we are lacking mri we are lacking frozen okay let's see what it turns out to be okay let's start ready have you taken your lunch yeah yeah done boss okay नेक्स्ट केस के ले रहे लंबा घुमा के लेकर आती है
ਪਹਿਲਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਛੂਟ ਗਿਆ ਚੱਕਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਣ ਨੂੰ ਸੀ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਉਹੀ ਦੇਖ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੋਟ ਕੇ ਆਣੇ ਬੋਲੇ ਬਿੱਲੇ ਕਰੀ ਇਹ ਕਿ ਕੰਮ ਤੋਂ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਰਦਾ ਕੱਲ ਵੀ ਤਾਂ ਸਭ ਕੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਨਾ ਹਾਂ ਕੱਲ ਰਾਤ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਤੱਕ ਆਪਣਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਦੋਪਹਰ ਤੱਕ ਆਪਣਾ ਲੰਚ ਉਹੀ ਕਰਦਾ 2 ਵਜੇ 2 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਚਾਰ ਘੰਟਾ ਮੈਂ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਸੰਡੇ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਬਸ ਟ੍ਰੈਫਿਕ ਆਪਕੋ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ 6 ਵਜੇ ਤੇ ਹੈ ਅਗਰ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਾਸ ਦਾ ਟਾਰਗੇਟ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੁਕਣਾ ਪੜੇਗਾ ਆਪ ਕਲਾਸ ਨਾਲ ਨਿਕਲ ਜਾਏਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਅੱਛਾ ਰਹੇਗਾ 1 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਟਾਰਗੇਟ ਰੱਖੇ ਤਬ ਤੋਂ ਬਜੇ ਨਿਕਲ ਪਾਏਗੇ ਔਰ ਤਬ 6 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਕਾਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਲਗਵਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਕਾਰੀ ਨੇ ਚਾਰਜ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਨੀਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਮਿਲੇ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਕਾਰਡਿੰਗ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਤੋਂ ਬੈਠ ਜਾਏਗੇ ਲਗਾ ਦੋ ਥੋੜਾ ਸਾ ਚਾਰਜ ਕੀਤੀ ਫਿਰ 3% ਦਾ ਚਾਰਜ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੱਕ ਜਾ ਰਹਾ ਮੋਬਾਈਲ ਡਾਟਾ ਆਫ ਕਰ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਬੈਕਗ੍ਰਾਉਂਡ ਮੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਐਪਸ ਕਾਸਟ ਰਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਅਰੇ ਸਭ ਪੀਛ ਲੈ ਤਾ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਕੰਪਰਟੇਰੇਂ ਤੀ ਯੈਸ ਸਰ ਵਨ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਸੈਪਰੇਟ ਲੈਬੂਲੇਟਡ ਮਾਸ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਸਰ ਇਜ਼ ਥੈਟ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਥੈਟ ਮਿਡਲ ਟਰਬਨੇਟ ਔਰ ਪੋਲੀਪੋਇਡਲ ਟਰਬਨੇਟ ਔਰ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਪੋਲੀਪੋਇਡਲ ਮਾਸ ਓ ਯੈਸ ਸਰ ਯੈਸ ਇਟਸ ਟੇਕਨ ਥਿਸ ਪੋਰਸ਼ਨ ਫॉर ਦ ਬਾਇਓਪਸੀ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਫॉर ਹਿਸਟੋਪੈਥੋਲੋਜੀ this could be an infected polyp as well see this yes sir rest i can aaja na jaldi he is not very hard since not very not being very hard i was suspecting some uh, straight diya kar some infected polyp as well nature 
it is coming very nicely in the grinder very soft see the luminal component i am just dividing the luminal component yes sir wait wait look sit for See this. <laughs> see this is a polyp. Yes, sir. We can see that on the screen, sir. Bro, what niche goes? Niche goes to niche. Niche. Oh. See, this is all polyp. Yes, sir. I just pulled out. So first of all, I am getting rid of this luminal component so that we can reach to the site of attachment. but doesn't look like any tumor this looks like a simple you know polyp yeah simple polyp i again uh, hold it see this being held below by the suction band band section block color sa too bright ha ye band ye band jaldi khol yaar aur isme khol Sir, has this patient had any surgeries done before as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Earlier surgery was done. We don't have histopathology seen. We don't have any histopathology. That's what I was telling. We don't have histopathology. We don't have MRI. Okay, sir. Ah, no. I'm waiting for the section to start. पर वॉच कर ओके नाउ सी दिस आई एम जस्ट ब्रिंगिंग आउट दिस प्रोलेप पॉलिपिज रहा this is the prolapse polyp nicha the bread see this is all polypoidal yes sir this is all polyp in the nasopharynx see now the nasopharynx is clear yes sir we can see this is all polyp 
so far i have done nothing but just debridement of the luminal component See the nose is opened up now. Then see this is the entire nasal cavity which has been opened up. This is your middle turbinate. Can you see now? Yes, sir. This is your middle turbinate which is so see collapsed. It was sandwiched between the septum and the polyp. Yes, sir. This is the maxillary sinus. Region back. So now we'll look into the landmarks and do a proper sinus surgery first for the maxillary sinus and then see about the frontal recess region and the frontal sinus. Lumen is all clear now. Wo camera acha tha yaar. Aa sakta kya dar? Ah, true colors were there. Huh? Alert me, Arash. No, what? Sir, have you used the same saline adrenaline solution to soak yeah. this? Yeah, 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 yeah. But this not being a sinus case, suspecting a tumor, we are not using Merosel. We are using these ribbon gauzes. Okay, sir. What? See now the coina. Yes, sir. See the picture is much better now. Yeah. The calculator there. See how useful the irrigation is. I am just improving the. Feel. Using cobbler at certain points to improve the surgical feel. Amazing tool. Now, earlier somebody asked about the uncinate, plastered uncinate. Plastered uncinate means uncinate plastered to the lateral wall, cobbler. So sometimes it makes the identification of the uncinate very difficult. See the situation here. This is coina. This is inferior turbinate. And see above, this is uncinate. Yes, sir. Since previous surgery is done, so everything distorted. Forty. Something wrong here. So such pathologies sometimes turn out to be infected polyp. See the insipated secretions, purulent discharge.
सेम काइंड ऑफ पॉलिपॉइडल मास पॉलिपॉइडल सी द मैक्सिलरी साइनस फ्रॉम इन साइड यस सर Doesn't look like any polyp for that matter. See this? See the maxillary sinus from inside. Very clear. Yes, sir. Like this. Once you have a polyp, maybe in AC polyp, you have to trace to the site of attachment and coagulate it. that will do later what yeah i am leaving this gauze inside the maxillary sinus for a while infected ac polyps do have attachment inside and that become the source of recurrence sometimes source of bleeding hmm hmm yeah yaar camera acha nahi hai on desk mein hai सी नाउ आई हैव जस्ट लेफ्ट दिस गॉड पीस इन द मैक्सिलरी साइनस फॉर अ वाइल यस सर सो दैट वी वर्क इन द अदर एरियाज एंड देन कम बैक टू इट दिस इज टॉपिकल एप्लीकेशन कुछ होगा सौकार करने वाले मैक्सिलरी साइनस एंड समूजिंग कॉन्स्टेंट ऊजिंग कमिंग विल सी लेटर टू वर्क इन साइड द मैक्सिलरी साइनस फार डीपर समटाइम्स यू नीड अ कैनाइन फोसा एंड ट्रस्ट मी टू क्रिएट अनदर पोर्ट फॉर योर डिब्राइडर इंस्ट्रूमेंट कॉटरी वॉट एवर no no mega entrosmy is different to reach out far anteriorly i am talking of reaching out far anteriorly see now the things are under visualization see the that's the maxillary sinus which has been packed that's the middle turbinate that's the upper part of the uncinate see the axillary region can you see everything yes sir very clear now we'll go further we know the posterior moids and sphenoid have no disease only this part anteriorly so this remaining uncinate see the lamina papyracea very clear yes sir see all disease which has come out from here now i'm opening up the axilla see this opening till big bone See how much of the axilla being open? Yes, sir. See that is agar niji. That is agar niji cell. I am taking away with a zero degree. See that? Yes, sir. and behind the agar niji somebody was asking about another approach to frontal sinus see this is i took away agar niji this is the septation and behind is the frontal sinus yes exactly see the frontal recess area opened up yes sir 
we know there is nothing in the post void and all yeah see the behind mucosa is absolutely normal see the picture much better yes sir this is the remnant of the bulla band lastly i will see the maxillary sinus the key area see the ground lamella behind that is ground lamella and we know there is no disease behind the ground lamella so i don't intend to go there see now the bulla has been removed yes sir that is the ground lamella that the skull base see that yes and that is the beak and that is the frontal sinus see with the zero degree only i opened up the frontal sinus this was a favorable anatomy so i could do it for zero degree but i will show you with the 70 now see everything clear yes sir give me 70 to show them frontal from inside and little bit of the beak work so this job is done from this side let's show you and then move on to the maxillary sinus yes see with the 70 now this is skull base this is your beak 120 see our same anatomy like i showed last time this is the axilla i am defining the beak see this is beak yes sir see the thick bone yes. and just behind the thick bone is frontal beak can you see the frontal yes yes sir that is the frontal simple no ifs and buts no doubts section see this relate very easily see the beak and this is beak this is beak and just behind the beak is the front up look up that is frontal that is supra orbital recess can you see yes sir the same anatomy like last time and this is beak again see this for extension there is this so much better extension see this is beak can you see the beak yes sir this is beak and just behind the beak this is frontal see the interior of the frontal sinus that is frontal since it is well mucosal is no disease there so i am not disturbing much septa this is the so now that part is ultra clear now see the anterior thoracic artery this one oblique see this is frontal this is supra orbital recess this is supra orbital recess and at the caudal edge of supra orbital recess this is artery can you see this artery here yes sir the frontal is up there 
and this area is now pretty clear can you see everything yes sir we can so nothing is required to be done in this region no mass no uh, you know tumor anything okay yes and sir the postage points are clear nothing is required to be done there behind the ground level as well now we go to the key area maxillary sinus i will remove this pack wash chalu rakhna look look all section there look at the maxillary sinus now see the maxillary sinus from inside yes sir. it seems quite clear yeah let me clean this secretions now see this is the mass which is attached there i mean this ac polyp see this here yes sir see the polypoidal yes sir if i leave this this is going going to come back see this yes sir so all polyp there is a huge polyp inside see this yes sir yeah. and this is the bleeding surface okay what i will do, rest of the maxillary sinus is pretty clear what i will do now the canine fossa approach very simple and this is the indication for that okay sir just take the upper gel i will show you that's a very very easy and uh, versatile approach Inflator will be sacrificed. Pardon? Inflator will be sacrificed. No, no, no. Yeah, some packs in the nasal cavity for the hemostasis. What about pre-lacrimal approach in this case? Yeah, pre-lacrimal can be done. Had this been a tumor, I would do pre-lacrimal. pre lacrimal means you just make an incision at the piriform aperture raise the mucoperiosteum on both sides the anterior wall of maxilla and medial wall punch the corner bone between the anterior and medial wall junction piriform aperture bone and go head on into the maxilla and then remove inside the disease and suture the flap back you don't have to damage the or sacrifice the nasal lacrimal duct that is pre lacrimal had this been tumor i would go with a pre lacrimal definitely but since this is not tumor so i will not go now i will show you the landmark for the canine fossa and trust me okay give me 0 degree see you have to enter through the anterolateral wall yes. sir ek you the tractor de den to den a tractor no aise nahi aise dikhana hai ye dekho boss ye dekho see the site for the canine fossa can you see uh it's gone out of view sir yeah yeah i am i i am showing outside yes sir can you see the eyeball yes sir stay in the mid pupillary line stay in the mid pupillary line a centimeter above the gingival buccal sulcus yes sir see this mid pupillary yes, line A centimeter above the gingival buccal sulcus. Sit, pick it up, Eric. Do you want to do it? See, using my trocar and cannula, I have gone inside. 
Hello. Yes, sir. See, I am in the maxillary sinus through this. Can you see? Yes, sir. So, what should be the direction of your um, instrument? Towards the opposite. Towards the opposite medial canthus. Okay, sir. Thank now, you. Now, see, I have not removed this from inside. I will show you where exactly it is there in the maxillary sinus. Okay. Give yes, me seventy sir. degree. It's just a minute. Let me clean the nose first. Wash. Wash. Yeah. See all these plaques I place for the hemostasis. You know. All clear? Can you see the cannula? Yes, this sir. Sogar? See, this is right within the maxillary sinus. Now, what I will do? I will use seventy degree. 40. Okay, sir. See, I am with my seventy degree inside the maxillary sinus. Can you see? Yes, sir. Now, through this. Now, through this same opening, we'll remove the trochar and cannula. Yes, sir. Yes? The, Both. The inner part of that was visible inside oh, the sinus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we removed both. Yeah, this is red forty. Mangar. Uskwa da dozane rakhu. Let me. Hmm. Hmm. Can you see my divider inside? Yes, sir. Now. See now this divider is taking away all this polypoidal. See this? Very good technique, sir. See all this lesion can be so effectively. Sir, the part of the mask that you are removing now, does that, uh, like looking at it, does that look like an infected polyp yet yes. or yes. does it look a bit uh, blocked? Infected polyp yes. only. It is very soft. It is 100% infected polyp, no doubt about it. So soft. What are the different indication of this uh, approach, sir? Yeah, whenever you have a very highly anteriorly placed disease, fungus, not able to remove it from inside, even with your angle instruments. Yeah, let me put out the one. So let's, um, as the divider got blocked, See, with red 40, you can somersault the blade. See, somersault means like 360 degree. Yes, sir. Without this approach, this was impossible. Yes, uh, that big polyp was hiding in anteriorly over there.
Yeah, very anterior. And pull it. See now it has come out. Okay, Nikhil. Yes. More mass. Sir, has someone described this uh, before, like using the debrider through the canine fossa approach, or is it your own invention? Uh, people have used it different, differently, but um, earlier people would use with the trocar. With the cannula remaining and passing the instrument through the cannula, but we do we remove both trocar and cannula so that it doesn't limit your movement. You know. Yes. Sir. See now. See now, three sixty degree. Let me show you much better. I'll pass it again. I will show you how versatile the red forty blade is. What you say, na? Can be uh, with cannula only the straight blade can be passed and that is never versatile. See the beauty. Yes, sir. Mm. See the beauty is, it can be summer salted. It is right from the most medial part, the most lateral part. See everywhere. Yes, sir. See the most anterior, most part of the maxillary sinus, most medial wall, floor, everywhere, three sixty degree. Yes. That's the freedom it gets when you don't pass it through the. Sir, do you have any? Clean. Everything crystal cleaned up. Nothing, backbiter. Sir, do you give any particular intraoperative, like uh, any particular wash to the sinus cavity in infected polyp cases, or just regular saline? No, regular, regular. You just remove the source of the problem. That's it. Zero degree. So now it is completely out. Yes, saline. Uh, RL is better than saline producing. RL is more physiological, as it contains potassium and lactate along with the sodium chloride. So the more physiological solution. Out there. See now the sinus cavity above. Yes, sir. So now the case is almost done. One bit of time. In a minute's time, we'll be through. See the big maxillary sinus opening. Hmm. 
that's the use second tube nasal cavity see the wide wide opening of the maxillary sinus earlier you have seen with the 70 all irrigation to wash away good evening sir dr samit lal here hello boss how are you good good how are you sir thank you for your wonderful demonstration i was wondering uh, because i have tried it sometime in these kind of anthrocoanal polyp the problem is that we can see it with a 70 degree but we our instruments don't reach so you demonstrated yeah. very nicely how to go through the uh, uh, anteriorly yeah uh, have you tried uh, is it possible I, i've tried it a couple of times to perforate the nasal septum a little posterior and then put the angle instrument from that side and reach the recess still you are not able to reach far anteriorly we have tried and uh, you've tried that yes, yeah this is a head on approach the advantage is there is no complication see this 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 yes. small opening we made in the fossa that will close you put the false back and it heals in a couple of uh, day or two yes 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 you won't even won't even appreciate where the opening was made it heals so fast Yes, yes, that's true. And there's no disadvantage, and it gives you wonderful 360 degree roller coaster micro divider inside. Right, that is true. You can remove under the 70 degree visualization each and every nook and corner of the maxillary sinus, and see about that is anterior artery. Yes, wonderful. Skull base, your orbit, everything clear. See now earlier how the big the mass was. Yes, and I had a gut feeling that this could be a infected polyp, and it turned out to be. Wonderful demonstration, sir. Thank uh, you. We'll uh, pack uh, it. Wash, करके pack कर दें. No, 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 no. Never. There, there's a question from Doctor Kailash. Do we need stitching of the canine fossa puncture? Never, ever. It can be a disaster if you stitch. If you stitch, can lead to emphysema. sub cutaneous emphysema which can spread very fast so allow the air to leak on its own and seal it like the tracheostomy wound seals up yes sir never ever try to stitch this can be a disaster otherwise yeah our next case is uh, getting ready ramesh sudar is again a nasal mass hai paru yes, yes. some limited nasal mass histopathology unknown we don't know i know mri see this so we can't see anything on yeah we can see it now uh, so ct scan cannot differentiate among soft tissue masses so this looks like a nasal mass attached somewhere on the lateral wall i don't know whether it is true or not but uh, there is nothing uh, anywhere else so let's see what it turns out to be whatever it is it is completely excisable hmm i just got a filtered picture ramesh 5 minute mein idhar Thank you. 
रमेश हेलो हेलो यस सर या एम आई ऑडिबल मैडम यस सर वी कैन हियर यू बट वी कैन सी या वी कैन सी नाउ हेलो यस सर एम आई ऑडिबल मैडम यस सर आर यू आर यू गेटिंग एनी पिक्चर यस वी आर नाउ 
I am in the left nasal cavity. We showed you was a small nasal mass, and this was a pack inserted. Can you see this mass lesion? Yes, sir. This is the mass attached to the middle turbinate. See this mass? Yes, sir. Not attached anywhere on the lateral wall. See this lateral wall is free. Yes, sir. And this is attached onto the middle turbinate here. Very clear. See this. What are the possible DDs running through your mind, sir? Cannot say anything because see, I cut the middle turbinate. Yes, sir. And mass is pulled down. And this is out. This will be covered today, no? Send for histopathology. Yes, sir. Sir, did you do any decongestion in this case? Yeah, the, some um, uh, marosel pack was placed. Covlator, covlator. Marosel pack was placed. See the one of the branch of the spinopalatine. See this to the middle turbinate. Can you see this? Yes, sir. This becomes the basis of middle turbinate flap. The spinopalatine artery, when comes out of the spinopalatine foramen, gives off multiple branches. On to Karo Koblet, Riyad. Nahi chal rana. Come on. Connected nahi kya? Hmm. Bada usko. See now? This yes. spinopalatine gives multiple branches. The one to the inferior turbinate which enters the inferior turbinate from behind one centimeter from the posterior most surface of the inferior turbinate. That's the site of entry. Then to the middle turbinate base, which becomes the basis of the middle turbinate slab. Then one to the septum, which is the basis of the Haddad flap. This mass was attached to the turbinate, so I removed along with the part of the turbinate and the surgery is over. See this? You saw on this in the CT scan, it was not going anywhere to the maxillary sinus. Yeah, <laughs> It looks some benign mass. We can't be very sure what it could be. Sometimes neuromas are there, sometimes meningiomas are there. It was very soft, so it's unlikely to be anything malignant or anything. Yes, sir. Of later. Yes. Yeah.
that's all about it so the posterior most part of the inferior turbinate is it just edematous there uh, like you know it looks a bit bluish yeah mulberry shape more in allergic conditions than in normal situation yes sir Thank you very much once again for your attention. This is over. Thank so you. I told you this was a this was a small mass lesion. Oh, sir. And the next case is induced. Being induced, we'll get back to you soon. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful demonstration.
हॉस्पिटल में ऑपरेशन कर मटकी वाला के जन तीन किलो में बनाए शिव गार्डन में अच्छा पार्टी रहता है मैम यहाँ का हम लोग का भी शिव गार्डन सबसे पॉज चल रहा है होती है दूर है मबी पे अच्छा है मैम कौन से हां 
just an announcement for everyone there are three more cases uh, scheduled for today couple of them are fungal sinusitis and csf leak repair so the case is getting induced so kindly uh, wait i think he is going to start the case now hello yes sir yes madam so are you getting anything on screen yes sir we can so this is a classical case of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis but i am talking on the basis of radiology and there are certain features which are quite suggestive of fungal sinusitis see there are variety of crs variants endotypes every endotype has a different underlying pathophysiology and one of them very common is allergic fungal rhino sinusitis wherein the basic underlying physiology pathophysiology is patients allergic to fungal antigen we inhale fungal fungus is ubiquitous in air and whenever the fungal material is inhaled our nasal mucociliary activity expels it to nasopharynx and then to gut those who are allergic to that fungus and that fungus happens to get trapped 
invite eosinophilic reaction allergic reaction and then the classical picture of allergic fungal sinusitis develop wherein the core initiating factor is the fungus and the material is composed of eosinophils degraded eosinophil and other allergic you know ige in other material see this to diagnose this uh, particular variant of allergic fungal sinusitis there are classical uh, you know criteria benton kun described earlier patients having polyps on radiology can you see this classical heterogeneous hyperdensities yes sir see this this is classical fungal material with mucin all around yes sir very this very clear on the scan and since it expands by expansile erosion expansile the sinuses become more and more enlarged because of the enlarging fungal material see this expansile bony erosion all around yes sir so erosion of the lamina papyracea bone erosion of the skull base bone see this erosion of the skull base then as you see anteriorly the frontal sinus is hardly any just like a pit but this is complete you know uh, you know at variable places erosion of the lamina papyracea heterogeneous densities erosion of the skull base and as you go behind see this is posithmoid and this is sphenoid sinus intersphenoid septa is destroyed by this enlarging material and see this is the common sphenoid cavity common mm -hmm. sphenoid cavity leading to the posithmoidal disease on the opposite side erosion of the skull base bony erosion but no invasion there are variety of fungal sinusitis invasive and non invasive invasion we all know yes that we have seen the epidemic of mucormycosis acute fulminant then the chronic invasive is aspergillosis ha huh. yes sir and amongst the non invasive the commonest is this allergic fungal sinusitis afrs so there are bone erosions all around but this is not invasive yes sir this is because of expansile pressure erosion so here this fungus is behaving like an antigen on which the body is reacting with the eosinophilic reaction so we have to remove this antigen this is a pure surgical entity there is no point in wasting time for the maximal adequate medical management moment you diagnose this this is a surgical entity otherwise it can give pressure symptom including you know the pressure on the optic nerve orbit and vision loss and all that so this is non invasive but gives inflammation and pressure symptom and need to be removed as being this is this being an antigen so the goal of surgery is like previous case we defined here again removal of all this antigenic load and eosinophilic material all inflammatory load establishing ventilation and drainage this is the situation where we need bigger antrostomies mega antrostomies of all sinuses involved maxillary uh, sphenoid everywhere whatever for the lifetime surveillance and third is to give opportunity to penetrate topical steroids see this is type 1 allergic reaction allergic to fungus for any allergic reaction in body the treatment of choice is steroids here also the treatment of choice is steroid so once you remove this antigenic load and eosinophilic material we train patient to push topical steroid inside to keep the inflammation at the lowest that is the goal of treatment this is not invasive fungus anti fungal sub practically no role big big zero this pure steroid dependent disease antigenic removal and steroid is the answer that's it so will be this is classically seen amongst young patients who are more immuno competent they have they you know we have more severe to the allergens more hyper reactive to yes so young patients typically unilateral disease and this is a classical example the classical example of afrs in a 19 year old girl so let's go to the case uh, any question on this the next case is going to be a traumatic csf leak having 1 and 1/2 cm defect at the skull base Oh, half centimeter. Next, who you know? 
hello yes sir so our goal is to do a full house face on the left side with mega and cross knees are you getting endoscopic picture yes sir this is a classical picture of um, you know multiple polyps see this incipited mucins yes sir this is very thick viscid like a chocolate butter sauce <laughs> this is classical mucin pulse comes around निकाल लो हेलो आप एक दो फनी चीज कहने का मन करा फिर बोले कि सर बुरा ना मान हेलो यस सर so the first goal is luminal clearance yes sir we don't have any landmark as long as these polyps are occupying everywhere yes sir so we have come back to the surgical thing now we were you had instigated certain thoughts of chocolate butter sauce in our minds minds of uh, uh, we yeah, started thinking is, about that you know <laughs> yeah this is very sticky very you know frustrating sometimes to remove it it's purely cheesy material see, see this is distorted uncinate process see this we were talking about uncinate see the kind of uncinate it is this is because compressed because of this volume of this mass yes sir You have no landmarks. I am just. Okay, sir. Na. Is what? Na. Is what? Na. He upper parai. More the fungus, more inflammation, relatively more oozing. But I am prepared to tell you. and i'm prepared that you can aapka matlab air forest aapka preparation hua simple nahi hua pehle se the uncinate is completely inverted 
नेजल कैविटी कम्प्लीटली ब्लॉक and see this is all uh, coming from the maxillary sinus here this one see this so, yes, sir this big one i am getting it out with a section only see this big one it's it's <laughs> See a strong section is the need a mic. Hydro debrider is another tool which is very useful to wash out this fungus. That is a jet which works 360 degree. See the fox sections get frequently clogged because of this viscid material. So the best way is strong suction then flushing this is non invasive named and in the final is one of kg trial of the kg kg is the 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 kg See, you have to flush hard. Yes. Yeah. Flush hard to get rid of this. Sir, which angle endoscope do you use for maxillary sinus surgery work and do you use it regularly in all cases to check the anterior wall or certain yes. cases? Yes. Only two endoscopes I use in practice, 0 and 70 degree. Okay. 70 degree is for maxillary sinus, for frontal sinus, skull base work, for Lateral disease of the sphenoid sinus. Thank you, sir. See the mega entrosmy. Here we want the long term surveillance more uh, you know vigorous steroid inducing 
Hoblesdorf. See the amount of burden of disease. Yes, problem. Sir, chai do. Chai nahi ji, coffee pee liye abhi. Aaj sugar chai to upar pahunch jaye. See the wide, big, big opening of the maxillary sinus. This is your middle turbinet. See this? Yes, sir. And there is a lot of disease medial to it. Whenever you have disease medial to the middle turbinet, you have to partially reset it for the reasons the steroid wash should effectively go. You just. All, all massive fungus. We know there is massive fungus behind in the source of point and the sphenoid particularly. And there is opposite post-sysmoid also involved. The, the frontal, uh, the sphenoid sinus become a common cavity. I need a wide exposure. Until was hardly any crowd there. Just like a pit, a small pit. We'll see with the 70 later, the maxillary. See now, more and more luminal clearance. We know there are erosions of the laminite places. So stay a little more careful. This is to define the maxillary sinus proof. Look at this. This is just to define. This is through cut. Now defining this actually sign of proof here at the medial end more see otherwise sometime you miss the heller cell over here see this that was the cell could you see one could easily miss this <laughs> Always clear this medial inferior orbital angle. See this cell with a fungus. Yes, sir. This is Heller cell. See more fungus inside. 
it's a massive okay. disease yeah so this is halar cell see this cell what you need to do is widen it and communicate with the maxillary sinus see this cell yes sir big cell yes sir hmm. quite an extensive disease on this side sir yeah so this was very important to communicate the halar cell what you need to do is for betterment remove the party wall between this and the sinus that's the treatment of heller cell just remove the party wall you know yes sir it will drain directly now sometimes we have seen the heller cells big even bigger than the maxillary sinus itself it is complete clearance at the level of the inferior medial angle of the orbit this is one side hidden area when see this yes sir one is likely to leave the disease but so far everything with a zero degree mote section lage isme patle nahi chalenge mote rakh all biggest possible sections sir while you are clearing the disease can you enlighten us enlighten us again uh, about the uh, steroid solution that you use post operatively and you have mentioned uh, in the beginning of this case that uh, to teach the patient to push the steroid uh, solution yeah. please yeah so we teach them in two positions see this disease along the lamina here first of all yes sir see yes see the lamina Pushing the lamina laterally, so it is by means and by means of this giving bony erosions. See this. Yeah. So see this. Yes, sir. This is all. clearance from the medial edge of the orbit this all behind is a lamina papyracea this is all lamina yes sir now coming to the axilla open up the axilla to the maximum third section i will change to 70 degrees soon to look up and in corners all fungal mucin wherever the fungal material is now i am changing to 70 degree so see up thoroughly look 
sir for intra op purpose the normal saline temperature is at room temperature or is it warm yeah. room temperature room temperature in sinus disease we never advocate the warm saline can affect the mucociliary activity on the in the crs where the mucociliary activity is already compromised okay. that we do at the skull base in the setting of tumors okay sir now see that is your beak see this let me show you how the frontal is seen see the beak can you see this thick bone is the beak this thick bone yes, this one this thick bone and here is the frontal where there is small pit yes sir see some musing is there in that frontal is not very big we have seen on scan see that is the frontal sinus that's it Oh, maybe 60. So the frontal work was hardly any. So mainly, this is the lamina papyracea. See, this all mucosal eyes. Yes, sir. Now some clearance. From the skull base level. See this all because of the disease. The septations are partly destroyed everywhere. I'll be through with the seventy in a minute or so. See the seventy is up there. All yes. clear. Wash them. All clear. These all are remaining septations which I am getting rid of. Very soon you'll get a clear picture. This is flushing saline wash. Saline wash. In this saline wash is very very important to flush out. any remaining fungal particle we leave the fungus behind it will behave like an antigen again see this mucosal reaction all this is mucosal reaction all there yeah. This is frontal sinus. Yes, sir. Skull base. That is the level of the ethmoidal artery, most likely. This one. Yes, sir. And now I am going towards the postethmoid. See this area along the lamina is pretty clear. See with seventy degree. See this? Yes, sir. Good mucosal eyes with partial pressure eroded lamina papyracea. See with seventy the orbital side and the frontal sinus and the anterior ethmoidal skull base all pretty clear. Yes, sir. We can see now. That. We can see inside the maxillary sinus. Okay. Now see in the maxillary sinus. 
yes uh, difference between 0 and 70 yeah so See how the fungus is occupying. So that you have to flush out. किसका लगा ले दो मिनट सी द फंगल मटेरियल इज स्टिल देयर यस सर कौन है यार कौन है तो अभी ऑपरेट करें बात बात कर हाँ सर अभी ऑपरेशन में है अभी बात कर हाँ हाँ आउट ऑफ स्टेशन में है अभी बात कर रहा हूँ बोल दो ना थोड़ी देर में कॉल कर रहे हैं थोड़ी देर में कॉल कर रहे हैं सर See the amount of fungus. Yes, sir. Quite a bit. It could have been easily missed with only zero degree. Hundred percent. I am trying to dislodge it to remove it. But what are you doing? After that. हाइड्रोडिब्राइडर कुड हैव बीन की हेयर दैट इज अ हाई प्रेशर जेट इन ऑर्गो नाउ यस वॉश Merosel. We'll mop with the merosel to dislodge it. See mopping with the marrow cell. It's a very effective way. See this? 
that's why i call you call this as a chocolate butter sauce see how cheesy it is Hello. Yes. Uh, can we supplement with canine fossa approach uh, in this patient? Yes. <laughs> Other days. Yes, that is the result. That is your reservation. Reserved. <laughs> <laughs> right. If we have some patients, we can uh, remove this most of the time without that. This is most of the time it comes out. Actually, what happens in long term, ki, it will loosen from this place or uh, spontaneously it will come out. Even after some days. Yeah. See? Yes. So this marrow cell mop works. So, Mira said that does it had done its work. So, out, out now. Wash, give me wash. You can uh, one can use gauge piece to not is not necessary that should always use mirror cell. Pardon? Gauge piece can also be used. Gauge piece is uh, you know traumatic. Okay. We want something just to push. Okay, okay. Gauge piece will create little mm -hmm. of erosion in that mucosal erosion. We don't want unnecessary trauma there. See now it's clear. Yes, now it's clear. By and large, give me a little bit more. Once more in the floor. Section. और सेक्शन बंद है तेरा हम्म मैं गिरा ही था ना वो इधर बोल रहा है फिर दिस लास्ट पीस यस 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 Still there are... You have to dislodge it yes. to get flushed. A still little in front, and that will come out. Uh, that is the last part. Uh, 
had there been micro hydro divider would have been finished in a minute yes I'm using 120 blade. Is it lying in the interior floor? Interior inferior floor? Yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's not. It is partial medial angiectomy. See how frustrating it is. Yes, now it's final part. I think it has come out. No, you look up. What is the level? That's how it is. It's too good to talk to people. I got it. But I got one. Okay. Okay. See, now it is clear, but I will rinse it thoroughly. Yes. Yeah, that's the big piece. See, that was within the folds of mucosa. So it gets it done. So I am uncovering these mucosal folds. See this. The white color is bare bone, it appears to be bone. Na. Yeah. yeah, some periosteum and bone. Middle of the last. White color is periosteum and bone. Yes, that was the one I was looking at and now it is perfectly cleaned up.
Yes, sir. Wash. Give me wash. Yes. Hello. Action bira. Let's start from the beginning. Hmm. Yes. Come on. It is ultra clear now. So this is from the maxillary sinus. See the mega entrosmy. Yes, sir. You were asking for the indications of mega entrosmy, and this is what. Yes. We have already uh, seen the skull base work there section. Yes, sir. What? Now the sphenoid sinus and the posterior sphenoids are left. See this? The rest is all clear. Yes, sir. Yes, zero degree. Since the opposite posterior sphenoid is involved, there is common sphenoid cavity, big cavity. I might have to remove the posterior most part of the septum. Like we remove in the pituitary to access the entire region if required. Now coming to the sphenoid. See, this is coina. Yes. This is superior turbinate. Yes, sir. Just to orient you. And here, this is the ostium of the sphenoid sinus. Sphenoid sinus, yes, sir. My options for the posterior septotomy is open. Sir, I guess you are going to leave that uh, edematous mucosa behind in the maxillary sinus. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. That is not disease. That is because of the ongoing inflammation. Because of the fungus, which were removed, that will revert back to normal. And the sphenoid is massively involved. See the disease. About the posterior sphenoid. Here. Yes. Sir. I am widening more and more first before removal.
दिस इज द बॉल प्रॉप टू डिस्कलॉज एंड ब्रिंग इट आउट डायरेक्ट सेक्शन टू यस सर पार्ट ऑफ द स्पिनॉइड गेटिंग फ्री See the post-it point here and the sphenoid there. This is opposite post-it point. this side this is opposite okay put tube there see this fungus this loss and i am putting directly the tube cool hold on let me just look at the Okay. So most of the sphenoid looks clear. I will use seventy degree inside to see the corner. Oh. Is this lateral recess? Can you see? i will show with the 70 now 70 degree within the sphenoid to see the corners ठीक है ब्लू वाला 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 ब्ल
That will not come like this. It's not very clear. That is cool. Let it in your mind, right? Section. See the lateral recess on this side. Can you see? This is the lateral recess. Yes, sir. This is the sphenoid sinus there, and this is the lateral recess. See the entire lateral recess from within with 70. This is lateral recess. Pretty clear. Now, this is to the opposite side, and see the disease here. Can you see? Yes, sir. Hidden behind the posterior most part of the septum. I told you, in case required, we'll do a posterior septotomy. So we need the not only removal but uh, long-term surveillance also. Come later. Then. See what I am doing? So, soft and nest laga hoa kuch. Aage laga hoa kuch. See, this is posterior most part of the septum I am removing. Do you appreciate? Yes. Yes, sir. We remove this posterior most part of the bony septum. Yes. Left the lower part intact to keep the vessel intact. Vessel for the septal flap intact. Thank you. 
Uncovering this region thoroughly. Right. So what is this? This was a compressed intersinus septum. I can see the opposite OCR. Yes, sir. This is opposite posithmoid. See the dura. Uh, you saw that they are in the opposite posithmoid dura was decent. Do you see? Yes, sir. This is optic canal below, it is underneath my divider. And that is the sphenoid. My aim was to look at the post model roof. And it is pretty clear. See the kind of exposure now. Yes, sir. Sir, please describe the structure inside the esponoid sinus. Pardon? Please describe the structure inside the esponoid sinus. Yes. Structure inside the esponoid sinus. Structures visible inside the esponoid sinus. Structures? Yeah. Cloud section there. I will show you again. I will mop and show you. See, this is your post model roof, this one. This is your optic canal. See this optic canal. Yes, sir. This is your optico. That is optic canal. This is your carotid artery. This one. Yes, this is the shallow recess. This is the shallow recess. See this. Yes. OCR. This is carotid. This is optic. This is OCR. And parallel. This is cella. The prominence of the cella. And below is the clival recess. Sir, where is the MOCR, sir? MOCR M is at the medial edge. See, this is cella below. This is uh, optic now above. And this is uh, uh, carotid artery. So that is somewhere here. Yes, sir. Medially. So now it is very good. You can see both sphenoids. I could remove the destroyed. You know, because of the pressure, the septum, intersinus septum, and we could, you know, everything pretty clear. That's why I told you to, I had planned to remove the posterior most part of the septum. Otherwise, I would not be so confident to remove this. See now? Yes. Not sir. only removal, not only removal, it gives you opportunity for the future surveillance now. You can't leave such areas, disease areas hidden in such massive uh, allergic fungal sinusitis disease. See the interior of the sphenoid structures. This is clival recess, this is cella, this is optic canal on this side, 
optic on this side this one this is postethmoid roof postethmoid roof and complete clearance this is the lateral recess on this side i showed you that was the lateral recess see that yes sir this is maxillary sinus see the mega middle medial entrosmy entire medial wall removed till the posterior wall this is posterior wall yes sir this is called mega middle medial entrosmy and the uh, anterior part we have already shown you so sir what is pre lacrimal approach for the maxillary sinus okay we discuss let me show you see in pre lacrimal approach what you do is see this is the anterior end of the maxilla this one piriform aperture okay make an incision over here vertical incision at the anterior edge raise one mucoperiosteal flap medially over the medial wall expose the medial wall one mucoperiosteal to the anterior lateral wall <laughs> and entire bone is exposed now after this remove this exposed bone the posterior limit is nasolacrimal duct staying anterior to the nasolacrimal duct and remove anterior lateral whatever you want to then you go with a zero degree you have head on access to the maxillary sinus you don't damage the lacrimal duct you stay anterior to it and then you remove the disease and then suture both the flaps again this is required in benign conditions where you don't need a lifetime surveillance like for example in jna if you do you don't have opportunity to look behind you need a surveillance you cannot do that pre lacrimal is not indicated recently i demonstrated you can see on youtube um, uh, in a nagpur workshop at dr nandu's place last month a big odontogenic cyst which requires a complete mars supplementation with complete bone removal on the cyst head and yes. then becoming a part of maxillary sinus we did a pre lacrimal approach once it is mars supplementation we closed it so you don't need surveillance for that so pre lacrimal is reserved for conditions where you need head on exposure of the maxillary sinus but not lifetime surveillance through that because that that doesn't leave opportunity for surveillance from there then you do your dankers okay so what is the difference between pre lacrimal approach and piriform terminoplasty piriform terminoplasty lateral wall mobilization is a different uh, you know we do very common now i tell you what is that once in situations of see if you have a big hypertrophic inferior turbinate yes sir. making nasal obstruction giving nasal obstruction huge hypertrophy what you can do you can give an incision over here over the middle inferior turbinate and remove this bone of the piriform aperture bone anterior and posterior to the nasolacrimal duct and push the entire turbinate laterally to open up the nasal space that is lateral nasal wall mobilization with piriform turbinoplasty so in case of having use hypertrophic turbinate rather than doing a turbinectomy you can mobilize the lateral wall laterally very safely and without any raw area thank you sir so i can show in one of the case if indicated when we have a huge hypertrophic turbinate there are two types of turbinate one is boggy boggy requires requires posterior nasal neurectomy because you you have to denervate the glands okay and bony hypertrophic is one which requires the lateral wall mobilization pack kar dena so this case is done we are going to pack it and the next is going to be a csf i told you traumatic 1 1/2 cm defect any questions regarding this uh, <clears throat> any questions anyone no sir thank thank you sir for the excellent demonstration we'll wait for the next case to start sir thank you madam thank you everybody for your attention for bearing with me uh, soon will be there with endoscopic picture
हेलो हेलो यस सर या सो वी आर रेडी विद द नेक्स्ट केस आई होप यू आर गेटिंग सीटी स्कैन यस सर सो दिस इज अ नोन केस ऑफ ट्रॉमा देयर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रॉमा इन द पास्ट एंड पेशेंट इज अ यूनिलैटरल watery nasal discharge from the right side now if you look at the ct scan with a classical history of trauma see this trauma to the frontal bone nasal bone you can see all yes sir now when you come to the skull base as you go behind now this is the beginning of the crepiform plate and see this through and through the effect to the crepiform plate can you see here yes sir very through and good. through the effect is almost a uh, 5 to 6 mm defect see this yes sir so that is classical uh, history and a classical watery discharge and this classical picture of herniation of bone through the defect this is a nasal septum deviation to the opposite side significant deviation and this is the looks like the brain tissue of same intensity is coming down in the no so we don't have mri we can't uh, comment on the soft tissue much now if you look at this defect in the sagittal plane see in the coronal this defect is from the cribriform going behind see where the posterior void starts see till here is the defect the moment posterior thyroid starts the roof is normal can you see yes sir so this defect is through the entire cribriform plate of the anterior thyroid the roof here and if you look at this in the sagittal plane here i am opening the sagittal plane you will find the antero posterior length of the defect we have seen the medial lateral length now see the intro posterior length of the defect can you yes sir this is uh, almost uh, 1.5 cm see this quite a huge defect sir yes so that is a bony defect and this is what the brain herniating through it so our goal is very clear with multiplanar reconstruction the main thing the key is the exposure 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 we have to expose not only the defect but the surrounding as well complete surrounding so that we can reconstruct in multiple layers we'll be using fat glue and a vascularized flap to give primary healing that is going to be a nasoceptal hadart flap in this scenario there are variety of flaps available in the nasal cavity but the hadart is a commonest one easier most reliable is uh, like a work horse for the skull base surgery and will elevate and uh, apply it over so that is going to be our aim plan amish ready so very soon we are coming with the endoscopic picture मनोज राकेश पूछ रहा है ना कि चाय फ्री वाला है क्या
राइट साइड था ना हम्म राइट साइड हेलो यस सर या ऑन कर हेलो can you hear hear me sir yeah 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 very well are you getting the endoscopic picture yes sir yeah now see on the right side 
this is unprepared we have not put any you know decongested or anything see this is a middle turbinate can you see something medial to the middle turbinate yes sir this is the meningo and cephalo seal see oh. the pulsations can you see very clearly the pulsations trying to appreciate it sir yes sir this is pure meningo and cephalo seal coming down this is middle turbinate and this is medial to the middle turbinate see this now the goal of this surgery is to segregate the intracranial from the extracranial space so as to prevent future infection ascending to the intracranial space the surgical goal is very clear and in order to do that you have to have an effective approach and that approach should include most importantly the good exposure of the area of the defect as well as surrounding surrounding is very important for whatever seal you place to stick to so it is not the defect only but the surrounding also need to be exposed number 2 the area should be flattened so that whatever seal you place is taken it become receptive to the seal whatever we place okay so area should be flattened see when we see with the zero degree there are lots of there is no flat area there is terminate on one side meningo seal is coming down so there is no flat area so we have to create a good flat area by means of surgical dissection number 3 is this area is in the vicinity of the paranasal sinuses so we have to ensure that after putting such seal the paranasal sinuses ventilation and drainage should not be hampered so we have to ensure that no secondary sinusitis should develop if you place the seal indiscriminately blocking the paranasal sinus ventilation drainage can lead to a bigger problem later on with sinusitis in the bigger dependent sinus in the vicinity of the csf leak closed area is going to be 100 times more difficult so at the end of the surgery we should be able to clearly ensure that my all dependent paranasal sinuses are pretty away from the seal and wide open in order to for the seal to be taken up as i said the surrounding should be exposed at the same time completely demucosalized to be receptive to the seal hello uh, yeah. what is uh, uh, there is depression anterior to the anterior end of middle terminate pardon there is uh, there is depression depression anterior to the anterior end of middle terminate depression That one, yes. depression yes where you have kept the mirror cell yeah what depression i i didn't get what you want to say just anterior ha just yes this is central part okay upper one upper one anterior yes yeah. yes this is uh, adhesions okay because of the trauma these adhesions form see this okay simply are, uh, yeah raw area on the raw area of me because that is far off okay. synechia you can say okay okay it has nothing to do with the disease hota hai na sir there was one more question from the delegates uh, what is the incidence of meningitis in a csf leak patient yeah so this is very important the answer is a uh, uh, never a predictable one but by and large in long standing leak patient up to 40% of the patient you know ultimately develop meningitis and you know overall in overall incidence of meningitis admitting in the neurological department you know the commonest cause is from the otolaryngology sources either otology or either rhinology somewhere from the nose or ear and in our country you know whether awareness level is very poor majority of these patient with um, uh, somewhere defect in the skull base in the nose or ear they develop meningitis and then present to the neurologist and then 
after the scanning or so the final you know the diagnosis is made the cause is detected and unfortunately many of the patients who develop repeated meningitis repeated you know meningitis treatment given yet no cause is found because this diagnosis of you know leak small leaks from the nose and ear requires a very dedicated imaging which is many many of the times not ordered like if you order an mri brain may not detect you need to have a certain proper sequences to detect the finest of the leaks like 3d drive sequences 3d flare sequences all those sub millimetric sequences you know, we have got many of the patient we recently had a patient who developed three times meningitis and after the third time you know the patient was referred to a otolaryngologist to detect the cause and a csf leak was detected so that is so unfortunate so the majority of the meningitis insidious meningitis the cause is in the uh, you know skull base quite an interesting diagnosis yeah this is my decongestion in the similar manner because i am going to dissect through all paranasal sinuses to create a flat area see that so first of all my biggest obstacle is this is the middle turbinate i will create a good flat area i will dissect through all paranasal sinuses to ensure no secondary you know meningitis uh, the, uh, the sinusitis happens to occur see when you work through the ethmoids through the ethmoidal channels the maxillary sinus you know is a uh, drain big bite so i will start like a regular fess and open up all sinuses that's a part of my exposure quickly one by one this is sort of like you do the fess see this ancinate yes sir in the same manner keep back biting keep coming anteriorly until you reach the hard bone this is the lower ancinate see this yes sir yeah that's the lower ancinate that's the maxillary sinus and that is the upper ancinate so quickly in next 10 minutes i will um, 10 15 minutes complete my exposure the csf leaks um, requires a dedicated approach like i told you it is not just about sealing a puncture you have to invest a lot of time in exposure exposure and exposure and preventing sinusitis further we'll discuss all this everything in detail this is i'm quickly going through this because we have discussed a lot during our sinus cases important thing about uh, removal of the upper part of the ancinate is band ho gaya this is very close to the orbit so be careful then of course here this is the upper part of the ancinate hola ni don't dance This is your lamina papyracea. Full name. Then, then, dal ke full under. Hear this. 
following the upper part of the unseen it see this yes sir i am uncovering the opening of this axilla opening of this axilla yes sir see with a zero degree only i have to invest my 90% of the time in exposure exposure and exposure the ceiling will be much easier after that that is the beak see the beak yes sir now this is your cabinet okay straight there straight straight quick corner one ya nahi 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 silent silent आइलैंड गुरु यार साइड से कर दो साइड से जो समझता हूँ ले लो ना यार मोबाइल नो दिस इज योर बुल्ला साइलेंट कर दो मैं प्लीज फिर जैसे लेमाइन ऑफ एप्रेशर लेटरली आई एम क्विकली डिसेक्टिंग थ्रू द एथमॉइड सेव टाइम See the skull base behind. Can you see? Yes, sir. Saving time. नहीं नहीं है my key area is here see the meningoan capsule medially yes sir See the huge meninga and cephalocele. This is the margin of the bony defect. See this? Yes. Is that the CSF coming out from there? Yes, obviously.
see this is your mining coin couple of schools slowly slowly will uh, reach out to the defect and surrounding this is your spinoid signer you have to be careful not to damage the vessel for the hazard see the intraspinoidal structures yes sir Now this was until now with the zero degree. Now I will change to seventy. I hope the picture is good there. Yes, sir. And, and you are oriented. What I am doing? Yes, sir. Just part of exposure, exposure. See, this is the ethmoidal roof. This is the ethmoidal roof, all right from the sphenoid sinus to the frontal sinus, and this is the cribriform plate medially. And this is the bone which is fractured. This is all meningo and cephalo seal which has come out. Yes, sir. This is fractured bone segment. It is of no use. Seventy. Okay. Can you see the frontal <laughs> sinus up? Yes, sir. See, this is beak. Just to show you, see the edge of the beak. See the edge of the beak. And just underneath the beak is going to be the frontal. Out there, the frontal area. See, this is the beak. Can you see this beak? Yes, sir. Yeah, the beak ends is going to be the frontal. This is so reliable a landmark. Always like that. See that? Yes, sir. That's the frontal sinus there. See the opening is quite narrow. You know, articulated. See the beak projection. Has made the opening very narrow. I can try articulated. If works, no. Yes. Okay. See the frontal sinus opening. 
Yes, so we can see it here. Very narrow. See? So narrow. I may need to widen a little bit. See, this is Venus oozing. Now, what I am scared of? Future, you know? Stenosis. Hello? Yes, sir. I told you in the beginning, this is not only about the CSF leak closure, the same time dealing with the zero degree. I need to really uh, widen a little bit of the frontal sinus because in any given situation, the frontal sinusitis develops later on. In the vicinity of this CSF leak closure, it will be very, very difficult to deal with. Change to zero degree. Later, I'll just drill a little bit of the beak to widen this frontal sinus opening. Okay, yes, sir. See the beak, um, little bit of the beak, uh, mucoperiosteum. I'm removing, I'm with zero degree. See this. See your leak get keep oriented. See your see your meningococcal encephalocele on that side. And what I am removing is this. A little bit of the beak to widen my frontal sinus outflow. You saw, if you remember, um, in CT scan, there was fracture of the nasal bone, frontal bone, everything, huh? Sir, so there's another question. So, uh, what's the anterior limit of the di anterior limit of anterior limit of the dissection that you're doing now? And I am just removing the part of the beak. That's it. Widen my frontal sinus drainage. Are you doing this like uh, in this particular case because the opening ostium is quite narrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Otherwise, why do? Otherwise, why to? Okay, sir. Out section. So that's a uh, So this additional uh, couple of minutes to deal additionally need of deal to. Deal with frontal sinus. It's not leak closure. 
post op sinusitis is very very troublesome so what was the type of the bird that you were using that was a 4 and 1/2 mm coarse diamond stylus bird high speed bird thank you sir Yes, widen the bit. See, this is the anterior limit of skin. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, I have a reasonably widen. At the end, we will leave a tube-like stent for a couple of days. See this frontal sinus? Yes, sir. There was hardly any space, you know. there is if you see the ct scan fractures in the frontal bone leading to this kind of problem to bladder See how it is widened. Okay, give me seventy degree. Now back to seventy degree to see that. See that is your frontal sinus. Can you see inside? Yes, yes sir. Much better now. Yes, sir. Much better, sir. Oops, white sun. So that is a adequate frontal sinus. See the interior of the frontal sinus. Nice. Hello. I think, Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I tell you, I think little you can still drill little bit more anteriorly. Yeah. Yeah. See, this was not a sinusitis case. Yes. 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 We're doing on the prophylactic grounds that did not develop sinusitis. So that's why I'm telling you. now this is our area of interest yes so until now what we did was for the exposure was for the prevention of sinusitis what is the situation on other side pardon what is the situation on other side of the nose other side is normal boss other side is normal okay but other side there is maxillary sinusitis left side In the CT scan, could be, but that is not CSF leak. Yes, but we have to take care of that. That <laughs> we have to take care of. That one also. Now this is our area of interest now. Yes. One doctor. See the bone defect and see the. Now whatever this brain which has uh, come out is, by and large, non-functioning. 
cobletor. Now cobletor is the key. We have to deal with this. See this. Will you also had a fab? Will you also harvest it now? No, we will harvest now. Afterwards. What is the original name of your assistant, Tetwa? <laughs> <laughs> we are interested in knowing that. <laughs> See this? What I am doing is ovulating. Ovulating. Shrinking. See this? Shrinking. Can you see? Yes, 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 yes. All going. You are using covalent or ablation mode. Which mode are you using? Ablation or covalent mode? Now, first thing is covalent. Okay. Ablation is dangerous. Yes, okay. If some vessel coming mm. through it, in ablation you can cut the vessel and can retract. Yes. So always, always. It appears there are two openings, no? Or single opening. This single opening. See this all brain shankan. Okay. Now you have to demucosalize the surrounding. There are two ways: either remove the mucosa. This is to prevent mucosal and to attract the seal. Okay. Yeah. To adhere. And other way is demucosalize by. Making it non-functional. Coagulate this. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. See, almost a centimeter around. See this. Yes. Making it non-functional. See this. One is septum is also visible now. One centimeter all around. Yes. See, this could have been possible only after this exposure. See the exposure. Bare area to provide the bare area for attachment. This would not have been possible without this kind of exposure. Okay. Okay. If the brain content is there, then the coagulation may be damaged. It is already dispersed. Pardon? It is actually... Excuse me, sir. It is a meningomalocyl. If there would be brain tissue, Malocell, there is also malocell, nah? meaning mm -hmm. so it may coagulation may damage it. That is non functional brain. Oh, non functional. This whatever brain projecting outside is non functional. But maybe vital uh, part of anything, any base no, of. No, no, no. no. Okay. This is the basal part of the frontal lobe. Frontal lobe, basal. Yeah, uh, itself and many of the pathologies functional area. The neurosurgeons many a times we remove yeah. this part of the bone uh, chunk of the this basal frontal lobe completely without any defect. Okay, sir. Yeah, it will guide us somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Now see, see, this is all intact. Okay. Intact dura. And this is the dural defect. Usually, nine ten percent of brain ninety. Dural defect is here anteriorly. No, sir. Nine. Usually, ten percent of brain. Ninety percent you can remove. This functional. Hey, Rajkumar. I'm very nervous. I'm looking at you. The advantage of coagulating with the coagulator is. Because it seals by bringing the layers of meninges together, many a time the CSF leak is closed by this only. Okay. Yeah. By coagulation only. Yes, there are still presently there is no leak now. Yes. But it will leak later on. Hmm. Mm hmm. Will you use cartilage or bone to seal it? Never. 
never and never recommended yes. the reason is you want the seal to be you know adhered together cartilage and bone once elevated from the surface they doesn't they don't allow the you know seal to remain in place so how how to address the big defect yeah, yeah with the flap without any problem so there is no hard there is no hard tissue cover no 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 Perfect. no structural reconstruction is required okay but earlier people used to put some i think we used to be, put some cartilage there yeah so that is never now that is old days uh, yes surgical techniques aaj improve ho jis evolving uh, evolving always the concepts are changing very fast with more and more studies experiences see this flat area yes 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 this is all dura see this and this is the defect see this yes. see this is the defect defect is here only this is dura intact okay yes good now give me merosel so dura will also support the graft na no? dura yes. the vascular structures so it will also yeah. support the graft see this vascularized flap and the fat will give a good uh, you know tough reconstruction i would say the forest or mona ke rakhna trip set mona ke rakhna tough means fast feeling yeah yeah thick scar you can say Yes, yeah. See the frontal sinus. If I don't do anything in the frontal sinus, sealing this area may obliterate the frontal sinus pathway. See this? Yes, 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 yes. See now that is the defect anteriorly. See, yes. <coughs> and rest of the dura is. Are you going to put some fat graft there? Yes, yes, yes. See this? Yes, very clear. see how much the exposure is required i have not done anything to the ceiling so far it's just part of the exposure and dealing with other issues going on madam sir now i will give you a close up tour for the leak if any ek aur the madam sir see this is what i am doing is hemostasis yes bada okay. See the raw area all around. Yeah, very clear. Picture is amazing. Yeah, I will make it little bit more raw. Because my seal will adhere if there is absolutely raw flat surface. Uneven surface may not allow the the seal to stick together at all places. See this. there is no active leak so far see whatever vein which was projecting has been taken care of see this coblator coblator is the key yes yes so everyone should must have coblator go and purchase first <laughs> save the money to purchase coblator and divider <laughs> yeah see now This is the projected bone. See this? Yes. You will flatten it out. Yeah. So no, 
no surface should be there yeah see now all this projected bone never ever consider csf leak closure is like sealing a puncture it is never going to work physiologically see the surrounding bone absolutely yes very clear ready to take on any seal to adhere see this more than a centimeter all around Right. Very clear field now. Oh. And now, oh. I'll leave this marrow cell for a while, and now I'll collect my seal. We have already harvested the fat, soaked in rifampicin. We have already prepared the glue. I fat. Fat harvested from which place? Abdomen or thigh? Thigh, thigh, thigh. thigh. Always thigh. You know, the thigh fat is more knitted. Okay. Knitted. Than the loose abdominal fat. So it's always better also in terms of providing more number of active fibro fibroblasts. Also using fascia from that area? No, no, no need of fascia. I am using a vascular slab, boss. Ready-made vascularity. Tensor. Once you are using vascularized flap, nothing like it. So there is no need of tensor fascia. No, no. Facial lata, what you call? Nothing. No free. No too much of free tissues. Free tissues can acquire in can get necros, can acquire infection and invite lot of problems. Stay away. Fat can survive much better because of the active fibroblasts. Fascia also can survive, but fat is best. You don't need fascia once you have, a, you know. Yes. Vascular slab. Excuse me, sir. Vas fat should be soaked in which solution? Which antibiotic? Rifampicin. Rifampicin. Because rifampicin is one of the best uh, uh, for the airborne staph aureus, which is the fat most commonly, you know, get autolysed with if infected. So you have to prevent autolysis by preventing. Step for his infection, and it works very well. Rifampicin injection, na? No, no, capsule. You make a solution, two fifty milligram per ml. Like we saw, three or four six hundred milligram capsule, okay. and mm -hmm. make a solution, two fifty milligram per ml. That's it. Two fifty ml one capsule. Two fifty milligram per ml solution. Two fifty milligram per ml. Ml. Now see, we want a defect is here. See this? Yeah, very clear. This is with a zero degree now, yes. and our flap, you know, vessel is over here. So flap, whatever we elevate, will be rotated from here. We want from here to here, and surrounding one centimeter as well. So you don't always need a classical hadad. See, this is my nasopharyngeal roof. My incision, the vessel goes somewhere here, just below the margin of the uh, sphenoid ostium. So my this incision goes down from here and come anteriorly. See this, the the flap may not be a classical hazard. You take depending upon the need, you can change the upper incision. What is the anterior limit of hazard? Depends upon the need. Hadad is such a versatile, you can always modify it. To reach this is the anterior most part of a skull base. Anterior yeah, I see. I have not gone far anteriorly. I don't need. Okay. Yeah. This is a modified version. You can say, depending. On, if I need a bigger one, I could take the floor. I could take the lateral wall. Everything along with it. There are. Eight to ten varieties of hadad we are elevating in the practice depending upon the need.
see we are creating raw area here raw area here because we want a vascular tissue at the skull base this raw area will mucosalize later on even a secondary infection at this area is manageable this is not life threatening but because of free tissues which get infected at the level of the skull base giving potentially can give meningitis and can be life threatening will so you also remove the we symptoms? believe in minimal free tissue and more and more vascular see this i didn't even inject saline yeah. no adrenaline nothing this is everybody can elevate like you have been doing septoplasty is in and out ye yaar pata hai unka so it is a easier flap believe me for all otolaryngologists so pericondial layer is needed or not yeah yeah it is included boss see this all included jana hai kya uh, i hope this is very clear the flap to very everybody clear. Yes, very clear every day we have been using hadat for some or other reason for skull base so this is our commonest flap what i have been elevating simple doesn't take time it is like pmmc for head and neck so reliable robust blood supply is such a wonderful flap hmm. reaching to the pedicle see this the pedicle been elevated over there over later we talk about nine the pedicle is here within the flap see see the narrowing the pedicle from below mand bada yaar section block please see this let's try whether it is going to come there or not the certainly can for sir flap see this very very big flap adequately uh, okay imagine the kind of seal it is going to give see the Sphenoid. I am going to leave it open like this. Yes. Frontal. I am going to leave it open like this. And rest, whatever raw area created, will be sealed like this. Imagine. Oh. There is no question of see this. It's very clear. <laughs> Future problems. No tension. See such a good flap. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Some people compromise in the land. Some people compromise in. elevating the breath and all that it should be adequate hello boss yes dear yeah.
Yeah. It was. It was when the Meningos and Gefilo seals were there. It was active, dribbling. Hmm? No, no, it is pure on the right side. I saw. See the huge raw area. Yes, yes, very clear. I saw the CT scan. The other size is pretty intact. Absolutely. No, no, I could see the leak. You could see the Meningo and Cafelo seal. Other side is nothing. See this? Uh, yes, very good. How much time does it take to mucosalize the septal area generally? How much time? Four, four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Okay. But this flap where with the where you are giving the ready-made blood supply, the skull base heals much faster. You know? Much, much faster. Yes. Skull base heals like anything faster. I was ready. What even is our way? So now we are ready to Yes, yes, you always Blue is not just adhesive, you know? Blue is something along with the adhesive property having fresh fibroblast. Invite fibroblast. It invites fibrosis. Blue invites quick fibrosis, which is what you want. Okay, all set. Now, uh, Last five minutes for the sealing. Yes. <clears throat> Will you apply fibrin glue also now in this case? Pardon? Will you apply fibrin glue? I will. Fibrin glue? Yes, yes. Always. That's what uh, Samit was asked here regarding the fibrin glue. So the fibrin glue. Not only has adhesive property, it invites fibrosis. See, I kept this fat over there. Okay. What I will ensure this fat to plug. You push it inside or just keep it there? Yeah. No, here little bit I will push inside, little bit. So there is no bath plug system. You are not going to. Fat is difficult to manipulate. It is very soft. Very difficult. So what I am using this surgical cell over it to manipulate. So you are pushing it with surgical cell. Yeah, surgical cell can be handled easily. See this? Okay, a little yeah. tougher structure, tougher structure than fat. Okay, so fat and fat, this one will also go inside. Yeah, so now. Yeah, okay. Okay. How much fat to be used? How do you decide this one? Pardon? How much fat should be used? How do you decide that one? How much fat? Uh, depending upon the size, it's pure experience. 
that part of it should go inside it should plug that's it part of it should go inside part outside self holding without pulsation chhodna so it should not fall spontaneously yes then only it can hold the brain pulsations you know chhodna what is that instrument sir this is a j uh, you know elevator hockey elevator for the See, without surgery cell manipulating the fat is very very difficult. Very difficult, really very difficult. Number two, surgery cell invites fibrosis, which we want here. Okay. So I think I am seeing this instrument for first time with you. No, so use several times. In any workshop, I have not seen this instrument. Probably you didn't notice. Um, okay, it may, it may be possible. See the surgery cell with the fat in white fibrosis. See. It is self holding. See this? How it is gently pushed by the blood instrument. See this? Yes, yes, very clear. Self holding glue. See this? Yeah. Have a good now. Thick skull base is going to be here. First layer of glue. Okay. At the margins. See this? Yeah, very clear. The fat application. The fat Give me zero degree. Let me show you better with the zero degree. Is yes. it your question, Dr. Satish? Yes, Hello? please. Uh, is that fibrin glue necessary for this one, or it can be done even done without glue? Without? Without glue. Is it is that glue is necessary for this surgery? Yeah, it is always uh, you know useful. But can, we, can but can we do it without glue? That you can use a uh, PRP. PRP. Okay. PRP or PRF platelet rich fibrin or platelet rich plasma. Okay. Poor man's glue. Okay. Poor man's glue. Garibo ka glue. We have used couple of times. It's not bad. Zero cost. See this? The entire area is very well covered. Yeah. All around, beyond the ostium is very clear. Ostium is free of everything. See the sphenoid ostium, the frontal sinus ostium. Okay. Yeah. So now it's party time. We'll also an, uh, apply another layer of fibrin glue on this. Yeah, yeah. Both the colors tube. Now I'll uh, put a small tube in the frontal sinus okay. to keep it patent by my glue and other layers. It should not get blocked. Okay, for how many it days? Is, you stay there? Five to seven days. That's it. So, we, what is the name of this tube? Any special tube or simple? Uh, simple drip set. Simple catheter. 
see this other end you can place in the maxillary sinus this is the simplest technique yes this will prevent the frontal sinus to get blocked see this frontal sinus drainage will go into the maxillary sinus now <laughs> yeah amazing 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 to see advantage of opening the maxillary sinus also the added advantage see, the best part is this flap should be tension free see everywhere such a great you know vascularized flap everywhere the skull base see my okay you know it's sinus see my frontal sinus without doing this kind of dissection of all sinus how would you ensure yes the yeah. sinus are not blocked <laughs> people may find it unnecessary but believe me all those patient were not done are struggling with a lot of issues we have seen apply the glue on the margin not on the to save the glue <laughs> yeah 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 on the margin <laughs> see this everywhere yes <laughs> see now this is plastered now see this this is plastered now can you hello yes dear we are we are with see, you see such a thick layer of flap we are we are, we are glued to that screen completely sealed beyond more than 1 cm of margin of the defect where can a, a csf leak come from tell no, me no chance no chance we are also glued like glue here <laughs> now to keep this everything in place i'll put in certain layers that is abjet number 1 gel form simple abjet gel form yes gel form okay this is absorbable this exerts uniform pressure see this which okay. i want see once i am soaking this in a, a solution ciprofloxacin earlier was the rifampicin for the fat See this second layer of antibiotic is the ciprofloxacin. See this, it yes. becomes a jelly. Yes. It soaks water, fluid, whatever, more than its volume. Yes, yes, yes. And see, it exerts uniform pressure. I want my inner seal to remain in place for a couple of days. Minimum five. Couple days. of days when the fibrosis ensues, you can remove this uh, tube and the outer layers. The marrow cell need not to be removed. See my flap so nicely in place. Excellent. Plastered, plastered. Yes. What it wanted was a raw area, flat area, and a wide flap. See this? Yes. See this area is completely covered after the flap with the marrow. Uh, this is gel form. I will press this gel form with the marrow cell, but the marrow cell need to be removed. Yes. So while removing the marrow cell, my gel form should not come out. Yes, okay. yes. So I am interposing this non-sticky layer. Okay, this simple plastic. Yeah. This simple plastic, na polythene, na. Yes, yes. Layer material. This simple plastic. Simple plastic to prevent. This is acting as a non-sticky layer. You know. So while removing the marrow cell, your gel form and inner layer will not come out. while removing the marrow cell okay see this yeah. simple nothing great appear simple but it is it is what so simple <laughs> i am not uh, showing any complicated which uh, nobody can do believe me i want everybody to do actually i have made the all the ent procedure so simplified that see now i am exerting pressure with this marrow cell on the gel form and now third layer of antibiotic this is Covidon iodine, betadine. I am soaking the marrow cell with the. See, okay. this will exert uniform pressure over marrow gel foam, and Do that will exert. Might, what is that? That will exert uniform pressure on the flap. That yeah. will exert uniform pressure over the flap. Uh, the fat. Okay. I want everything to remain in place for a couple of days. See now. 
had i not put the tube at the frontal sinus see this yes. what would happen to the frontal totally block would have been have you used any use of rapid rhino what the new packing material has come in the market uh, not really not really this is our time tested material we have used in our thousands of cases see this now i am keeping this marrow cell with a perpendicular marrow cell in place see this yes okay see this will keep the other marrow cell in place and this is coming till outside the nose see this okay yes this will keep with the outside packing like this so everything till skull base is stented okay yeah. great great leave it for 4 5 days nothing will happen great applause for you thank you even the bo bombardment cannot displace this now it is full of layers one over another till skull base what we want the fat and flap to remain in place that's it rest will all come out is, is this the last case or next is there any more case what do you want no i think it should be the last case because our party will be destroyed but after us soda व्हाट क्या चाहिए भाई आप लोग हेलो पार्टी में सर आफ्टर हाउ मेनी डेज मेरो सिस विल बी रिमूव्ड इन टू 5 डेज आफ्टर 4 टू 5 डेज वन सो इट शुड बी रिमूव्ड सो टिल देन द सील विल मैच्योर द ग्लू द फैट एंड द फ्लैप विल स्टिक द मेरो सेल विल रिमेन प्लेस रिमूव द द जेल फॉर्म विल रिमेन इन प्लेस रिमूव द मेरो सेल वेनु पता है सबको एंड द ट्यूब आफ्टर सेवन डेज यू ऑल नो दू वेर टू गो डॉक्टर मनोज वेर इज डॉक्टर अरे मैसेज कर बोल दो माइक अरे आप भी आयो दिनेश वहां से बुला लिया जयपुर से दिल्ली अपना अभी पंद्रह तारीख को है वहाँ हाँ बहुत से सारे फोटो तो लेना